Exeter. Red Roses taking on Canada in the first of a two test series taking place this month. We're certainly looking forward to the action. The fans already packing into the stadium. They're looking forward to it as well. My name's Kenzie Vanali, and I'm delighted to say that alongside me throughout the afternoon is a rugby world champion who won 58 caps for the Red Roses and we're going to get straight into it because we're ready for the action to unfold. So let's get to our O2 Inside Line Live preview. There's just the one change to the back line that the 15 started at, against France in the women's TikTok Six Nations. Three changes overall to this side. But of course, despite the lack of changes in the personnel, we're expecting to see quite a significant change in the way this team plays and the approach of this team, Cap. Absolutely, it is a new era uh, for England. New coach coming in, they're, they're finding their feet and it's exciting to see what they're going to bring. Jess Breach, the player, to come in. She's got absolute gas, so we hope to see her uh, get the ball. And with the likes of Holly Aitchison at 10, she's so good at moving that ball wide. And this is a, uh, a fit uh, team and it's a really good England squad. I'm excited to see what they can bring together today. Yeah, we're enormously excited and we know they've been putting in the hard graft. Lewis has been speaking to us before they came out to warm up, how much training they've put in to get to this stage, which is exactly what we want to see. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of it on their social medias. We've seen them put the graph in here as well. Like, the, uh, you know, as a player, like when you used to play, there are some things you don't miss and the, the shuttles uh, are not and the what bikes, uh, they're pretty savage as well. But no, they're putting it in and, and they need to as well because this Canadian side is fit. They were just jogging past us earlier, nearly, nearly ran into me. And the quads on these women, they're phenomenal athletes. And so England have got to put the, the shift in because we saw in the semi-final when Canada faced uh, England, Canada came out firing. They were quick, they were agile, they were fit. They're an incredibly fit side, and we'll talk about them in just a moment. Before we do, though, we should talk about Lark Atkin Davis. What a special day this will be for her. She will receive her senior 50th cap, an enormous achievement for a wonderful person. Yeah, huge achievement for anyone to re uh, reach 50. The amount of consistency and performance in terms of looking after your body off the pitch. And if you were to ask 50 people uh, uh, one word to describe Lark, I guarantee they'd say lovely. Uh, off the pitch, she is just a lovely, selfless person and on the pitch, an animal, uh, you know, try scoring machine, like gets the work done. But yeah, um, a legend of the game and I'm really, really happy for her. Isn't that so lovely when you've got a fantastic player, but an equally fantastic person. So we really are thrilled for Lark today. We're also delighted for Maisie Allen, another special day for her. She'll receive her first senior cap. She is a truly incredible player. She's been performing here. Of course, this is her home ground. She'll be looking forward to running out here for the Red Roses today. Yeah, well, I mean, we've been saying her name in the commentary team at uh, club all season long. She's been fantastic standout player, but getting that cap is that extra bit. It makes all of it worth it. And she to do it at Exeter uh, is going to be massive for her. So excited. It doesn't get much more special than that, does it? That, you know, your first cap at your home ground, really, really special. Imagine her family are looking on with pride as well. Uh, now, Marley Pack has spoken her press conference earlier on in the week about just how important it is to have players of the likes of Maisie coming through into this squad to push the senior players and to almost put pressure on them. How important is that? Yeah, it's huge. If you've got someone that feels they're undroppable because no one's that close to them, they're never going to get the best out of their own performance. So having someone there who is pushing you, who is after your shirt, they're going to play better because they want the shirt. You're going to play better because you're in it and you want to keep it. So it's so beneficial for the squad. And of course, Maisie's got some teammates on the opposition. That's always a fun one, isn't it? That must be uh, an interesting situation. Yeah, I think the girls on the Canadian team that are at club with her are like obviously really excited for her, but gutted because they know obviously <laughs> how good she is. So they're going to be wary of her. But uh, and I think they're delighted for her. Well, let's specifically look at this Canada side then. We've kind of touched on the fact that when they faced England in that World Cup semi-final, they did go toe to toe with England. They are such a physical side. What are you expecting to see from them this afternoon? I think the physicality is a given uh, when, when you have Canada and you know you're facing them, you know you're in for a tough uh, 80. But I think they've been working a lot on the detail, on the rugby side of things, and they aren't scared to run it out of their own 22. They're a really exciting side as well. So I think the detail and being clinical is what they'll have been working on because, yeah, they're, they're going to come at it all guns blazing. They they really feel disappointed about that loss, obviously, in the semi-final to, to England. So uh, they're wanting to redeem themselves for that. 
Yeah, I imagine that's still hurting, that's yeah. for sure. Uh, you mentioned that they're an exciting side. I want to talk to you about another exciting England player. I know you're a big Holly Aitchinson fan. You must be looking forward to seeing her in action again. Yeah, I can't wait for her uh, to see what she does at 10, especially, uh, you know, with the players that she's got outside her, exciting players. Uh, Roland in at 13 is going to be an exciting one um, as well. And then Meg Jones, when she comes off the bench, she really is such an exciting player, both on sevens, but we haven't seen yet her full potential at 15 and I cannot wait to see it because she just brings something different to the side. And Sandy Park is a special venue for the Red Roses. The fans seem like they're already in fine voice. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can hear them. Uh, it's always a struggle uh, when you're at Exeter to hear each other, which is good. It shows uh, where it's building. But no, it's a fantastic venue. The fans always come out in full force and uh, it's going to be noisy today. Yeah, it certainly is. As you say, difficult for us to hear one another, but <laughs> yeah. great for the team and for the fans. Uh, Kat, I'm going to let you get up to your commentary position. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be handing over shortly to our commentator, Nick Heath. Before that, though, let's look back. I caught up earlier with both head coaches. Here's what both Lewis Deacon and Kevin Rue had to say ahead of the game. Lewis, this kind of feels like a, a bit of a new era for the Red Roses. What's the mood like in camp going into this series? Um, yeah, it is a new era. Um, very excited. Um, everyone's really looking forward to the game. It's been um, an incredibly long pre-season. Um, the players have worked really hard and um, yeah, they just need a game now just see where we're at. Of course, it's a, a special day for Lark, Atkin, Davis and Maisie Allen making their special appearances today. 50 caps for Lark and Maisie on her first senior cap. Just how big an achievement are those milestones for both of them? Oh, amazing. Like, Lark is um, Lark's the ultimate professional. Um, she leads by example. She's um, part of the leadership group, senior player. Um, she said she's waited a long time for the, the 50th, um, but it's well deserved, yeah. And then Maisie... It's a dream come true for her. Um, we've been massively impressed with her since day one of pre-season. You know, such a young girl um, coming on the scene, great leadership quality straight away. Like she's obviously led the uh, England 20s, but yeah, she's shone since day one and she's got a real bright future. Looking at the opposition then, Canada are a hugely physical side. What challenges will they create for you today and how have you prepared for that? Yeah, well, I, I think this is why we wanted to play Canada like they're really strong in the set piece like you say big physical team um, very fit um, last time we played them in, in the World Cup they posed us a few uh, problems um, so we're expecting the same t today um, in that World Cup they kicked more than we thought they would um, so yeah we'll just see how the game goes today and a word on the fans Sandy Park has been a fantastic host venue for the Red Roses over the years just how important is their role in the success of the side no, it's brilliant. Every time we've been here, like we played the Black Ferns here, then USA uh, last year, we've always had great crowds here and they really do support the Roses, so it's great. Kevin, great to see you. How have preparations been building up to this series? It was good. We just arrived last week. Uh, the weather was not perfect, but the, the city is great. It was fun for us to just be together after July. Uh, so it was a good preparation for us and we are excited for today. Of course, it was a fantastic matchup the last time these two sides met. You said it came down to the details in the end, and you said England were better than you at that. Is that something you've been working on as you built up to this series? When you lose, you can't say it was fantastic. It was a good game. It was an OK game for us. It was for sure for the fans. It was fun to watch. Uh, yeah, we work on details. We have a core group now, like we're working more and more together. So those details come, and I hope like we're going to get the chance to show that to England today. But it was an enormously exciting match and you proved that you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with England. Yeah, I hope so. And I hope, I hope it's going to be the same even if we have a short time of preparation. But uh, we are very uh, efficient now. Uh, when we assemble together, it's very efficient. We have the same group with a lot of new kids coming in. So it's just fun to see that the mix of like a core group and kids coming in. And uh, it's exciting. This is England's fifth test here at Sandy Park. They are yet to lose. They've made this quite a fortress here. Um, you have got a, a whole host of young talent coming through, which is extremely exciting. Yeah, we have a couple of new players now, like uh, since World Cup, uh, even in the core group now, like even after World Cup, we have new players coming in. So uh, we hope to win for sure. Every time we go on the pitch, we know we play the best team in the world. So we know it won't be easy, but we are going to do everything for 80 minutes to get the win for sure. Kevin, all the best today. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you, guys. Afternoon, everybody. Glad you were able to find us. 
first of a two-test series as England's Red Roses host Canada. Sandy Park this week, the Stonex Stadium in seven days. England, the world number one side against Canada, who are ranked fourth. Two sides who faced off in Eden Park in that semi-final in last year's delayed Rugby World Cup. Players of both sides and the fans truly relishing these sorts of encounters. Let's cast our eye across the runners and riders then. It is the first England side that interim head coach Lewis Deacon gets to name and it's one with plenty of familiar faces from that Grand Slam winning match five months ago. Look no further than Lark Atkin Davis, married this summer, now the Bristol Bear celebrating a 50th cap alongside Mackenzie Carson and Sarah Byrne. Carson, a former Canadian, allegiance duly transferred. Kath O'Donnell joins Galligan in the second row with Talling and Captain Packer on the flanks. Zoe Allcroft is at number eight for just a second time at test level. And the back line with just one chain since that glorious day at Twickenham, Jess Breach invited to start with Claudia McDonald handed a bench spot. And it is on that bench where we have two notable names amongst others. The returning seven star Meg Jones has been making a big impact in training and one of Exeter's very own. Maisie Allen, former England under 20s captain, waits to make her Red Roses debut. As for Canada, well, they've uh, had a bit of game time more recently in comparison to England. Their Pacific Four Series matches earning them. Their place at WXV1 next month. The last of those, their win against Australia in July. Not too many changes from that lineup here. Certainly in the pack where regular watchers of the Women's League will be familiar with that former and current Exeter Chiefs front row combo with Hunt, Tutosi and Menin. Holt Camp, a former Loughborough Lightning star and Captain Fantastic, Sophie de Goody, coming back to Saracens in November. The back line will have some less familiar faces. A second start in a row for 23-year-old Claire Gallagher with a first start at 12 for Maddie Grant, normally a winger. And she's alongside Fancy Bermudez, the seven star with four tries in three games for Canada. The experienced Farris on the right wing in contrast to second capper Flo Simmons on the left. And in terms of the Canada replacements, well, one name stands out above the rest. Number 23, the returning Magalie Harvey, former World Player of the Year when she lit up the Rugby World Cup nine years ago. Her first time in a 15s lineup for five years. Well, the fans are in. And Kat, well, for those that might just be tuning in, I mean, tell us about Canada. Their men's side may have shrunk away from the world stage in recent years, but their women's side, it's right up there, isn't it? The sun is popping out as we see the face of Susie Appleby. Look at her, she's got the blazer on today. Not so much the tracksuit. <laughs> she will be so, so proud of Maisie Allen. And uh, well, you talked about it in the build-up. There are, of course, Exeter Chiefs teammates within that Canada lineup. And uh, well, I had the chance to speak to Emily Tutosi this week, and she said yes. While this is all about Canada against England, there is a touch of pride overseeing Maisie Allen in that lineup. I went down to Penny Hill Park as the coaching ticket were all stood around. Each of them said to me that she was the one to impress. So perhaps showing a bit of wisdom and leadership as well beyond her years. Just 22 years of age, she turned 22 this week. Had a bit of cake in camp and uh, getting set to make that debut. Of course, know that England's men will be playing a little bit later on. They've got some Rugby World Cup duties to get done with Chile, but we are delighted to have your company wherever you're finding us, on the England Rugby Facebook, YouTube, and, of course, via TSN in North America. It's a really good afternoon to you from Devon. Little light breeze coming across the field. It can swirl around here. Any fly halves that have been down here to kick the ball will certainly tell you that it can come straight in off the seat and swirl around here. We reckon we've got around 10,000 in this afternoon, which is not bad at all. Domestic season in terms of men's and women's rugby just getting up and running this weekend. In fact, the first weekend of the PWR Allianz Cup. That taking place, we've uh, got a couple of new teams in the Women's League 
likes of Leicester Tigers, the likes of Ealing Trailfinders, it's Leicester Tigers who've got themselves underway this afternoon as well. The first cup games taking place last night, cup games in the men's league as well. Engaging this rugby public down in the southwest. They love their rugby down here, don't they? when they bring it down here as well because you do get really good crowds they are just so into their rugby um, as well and it's, and it's great to see the noise that we'll hopefully hear today uh, and especially for, for Lark running out on her 50th I hope this stadium erupts for her and England of course they have John Mitchell in charge who uh, is currently away on GT with Japan at that Rugby World Cup in France but uh, he will be taking charge he's likely to be meeting up with the Red Roses when they make their way down to take part in WXV1 in New Zealand. Lewis Deacon, the interim head coach. He's brought in attack coach Lou Meadows. And Sarah Hunter, initially announced as a transition coach to help those players coming through into the elite level with England, but she's also now been tasked with leading on defence as well. So she's had a had her head into the textbook. She's been watching the videos. I mean, it's, yeah, being thrown in at the deep end, uh, you could say, but she's such a quality player and leader that you, you're going to automatically have your respect from the squad anyway. That coupled in with the fact, decent coach, and uh, she's really going to take this defence uh, performance up. Yeah, and talking to uh, the likes of Marley Packer in camp during the week, she was saying, you know, we're buying into having that familiar voice around camp as well, and we're asking questions of Sarah Hunter if she doesn't know the answers. She's going and looking them up. She's then coming back to us. So they are all learning together. And if you're wondering, well, would they not bring in another defence coach of their own? Well, I think Lewis Deacon has had the view that they have had enough change from the post-Simon Middleton era. Happy with how things are. John Mitchell will come back and look after things. But in the meantime, it's Sophie de Goody who leads out this Canada side on the occasion of her 25th cap. Heading back to Saracens after a spell there, post-pandemic. Few of the Canadians came over and wanted that extra game time in arguably the best women's league in the world. Ahead of them, playing in that Rugby World Cup that was postponed by a year. Quite the player. Mum Steph was co-captain at the very first Rugby World Cup in 1991. And little surprise as to who will lead out the Red Roses. On the occasion of her 50th cap, Sandy Park will welcome Lark Atkin Davis. Husband Jamie, Mum Ruth, Dad Matt, sisters Fern and Holly will all be immensely proud. She'll be mainly pleased that her Red Roses colleagues have not left her out there on her own for too long. Congratulating and saying good afternoon to all of our England teammates. It's almost like it's her wedding day again. <laughs> Hello, thanks for coming, thanks for coming. All right, we have set the table. We are all ready to go. This match part of that Summer Nation series and we are reminded that we take our stand against racism, whether it's in sport or the wider world. A moment to mark rugby against racism. And now a chance for Sandy Park to get into full voice with the anthems.
plenty of meetings between these two sides in the past it's two years since the last Canada test in England. This is the 12th time they've met here. Red Roses have won the last nine encounters, Canada last winning in 2016, but that Rugby World Cup semi-final, 26 points to 19 to England that day. They will know they're going to be in a contest this afternoon. Our referee, Lauren Jenner, originally from New Zealand, lives in Italy and uh, aligns with the Italian Union in terms of representation with the officiating group today, Clara Munarini and Clotilde Benvenuti. Our TMO is Matteo Lipparini. The two teams are going to have to switch ends from where they were based for the anthems. Canada are the ones who've won the toss to kick off. So we'll have a little switcheroo before things get underway. Twelve of this England team featured in that Rugby World Cup semi-final against Canada at Eden Park. Sixteen in terms of the Canadian lineup defeated a year ago. With the new international competition WXV on the horizon next month, women's rugby is lifting off. Two years to go until the home Rugby World Cup in England. This very much feeling like the start of that journey. Glad to have you on board. It's England against Canada. We're live from Sandy Park. Game on. Holly Aitchison, clean clearance. Now, did she tiptoe out of a 22 when she hit that? Certainly been awarded as if she was still in. It was close, wasn't it? It was close. Canada win the line. Straight down from De Goody. Looking to use it in midfield. Maddie Grant, more used to seeing her with a 14, occasionally a 15 on her back, but the first job is Marley Packer getting straight over the ball and winning England a turnover penalty without a minute on the clock. It's what she's known for. Marley Packer is absolute jackaler. She will go in for that ball. She's so quick over it to steal it, and that's something that Canada are going to have to be really, really wary of. So they, they did their first move. They did a good collision in the middle and looked like they made ground, but then you just cannot run into the likes of anywhere near Marley Macker because she's going to steal that ball. Aitchison, Packer, bouncing through the first tackle. Really big collision with Tyson Bukaboom. Davis, Atkin Davis, got to get used to saying that. Aitchison. Little one over the top, certainly going to be a tester. Kildun gets her hands to it. Abby Dow for the corner. Oh, had the wherewithal to recognise that she wasn't going to get there. So Helena Rowland can. First try of the game, it's thumbs up from Rowland. A crossfield kick doing the business. A really beautiful, uh, well-worked move there as well. So the decision to go for the cross kick, uh, crossfield kick initially, but then the chase that they were able to put on it. And the work as well, the back and forth uh, between the backs there, really nice. So it's what Aitchison brings. She can scan and have a look. So it's a lovely bounce there for Kildun. A flat pass uh, to Dow. And Dow possibly could have rolled and gone and outstretched for herself, but quite a selfless player back inside the pass to Roland to finish it off. Well, what a statement from the Red Roses. Try on the board with just two minutes on the clock. And Helena Rowland is going to be the one to convert her own try as well. Seven points on the board then. And seeing it again, slow-mo, a lovely kick across. And then the bounce is kind, but it's the, the support work as well from Dow, the hand off the offload, because if that Get, if she gets tackled there, potentially they look at getting a turnover if Canada get in, so well worked try. 
Aitchison. She was definitely in the 22 that time. Oh, but it's been beautifully kept in field from Graham, but she might have just handed the ball over. It was there for Dow, but in fact, penalty goes the way of Canada. Yeah, Grant, they're really showing off her skill. That's a very difficult one to be able to touch. Use her foot, bring it back in. Great initially, but then Dow's reaction to, to dive on it was um, really quick as well. Not sure how many times you'd be able to see that executed with that, <laughs> that skill set. Fantastic from Grant, love to see it. Emily Titosi used to throw in the ball in at Sandy Park. A little bit of a juggle. And down for Buki Boom on the occasion of her 61st catch. Second only to the retired Gillian Florence. 66 for her, away from Pelletier. Oh, the little wraparound ball didn't quite find Claire Gallagher. It's going to be the option to try and straighten things up from Florence Simmons. Big tackle from Gallagher. Now it's out the back from McKinley. Hunt, oh, and it's the intercept for Holly Aitchison. And Aitchison, the former seventh player, has certainly got the gas and has Helena Rowland. But they're going to get stopped inside the 22. Good cover defence and chase back from Canada in the circumstances. Lucy Packer with Marley to her right, but this looks like it might go a little wider as Tatiana Hurd waits for it. Then it's the tip on into the hands of Zoe Allcroft, the Gloucester Art Prix number eight and co captain. England penalty as Canada stray offside. How well read was that? You've got to time those intercepts really, really well because if you get it wrong, you're leaving your side short defensively. But Holly Aitchison just nails that, goes through. And again, this team is really looking at keeping that ball alive. They're moving it before the contact point. So you can see here a lovely flat pass you think it's going to be, but then really well read that out to in line, scanning the whole time. That pass was such an important one in there as well, rather than just carrying on herself. England looking to try and drive into that corner. Certainly bodies flopping on the floor. And Jenna, our referee, happy enough that she's seen it grounded. It's Marley Packer who's coming up with it. England showing exactly what they can do. They're known for their scoring off of their line out of their rolling balls and no, no different there. And that's their, what's known as the Marley Packer strut. Uh, I would say, as, as she scored and, and walking back. But this is a strong pack, and uh, Canada would not have expected this strong a start, I don't think, from England. They'd have wanted to be uh, in the mix with this. So just power and strength going in here. Training park, move, and goes over, and enough to see for the ref to say, ball's over. Oh, conversion attempt off the right hand, upright. Got to get a round of applause for a valiant effort nonetheless. England up to 12. Looking very, very positive with ball in hand. Yeah, and, and again, it's the first one came from a penalty from a jackal kick to the corner. That one came from an intercept from the defence. So the England defence at the minute really leading the way and allowing them to be able to put themselves in a position to atta attack and score. Aitchison, that was slightly better in terms of restart for Canada, definitely finding England outside the 22 to force them to play it. And it's Kath O'Donnell, Loughborough Lightning second row with the carry. Then it's Galligan. We might just be starting to see a little bit of this different shape that England are trying to work. Well, we certainly won't with Canada being able to ruck over as effectively on the turnover as they just did. And Pelletier will play it, Canada without... A whole load of ball so far in the opening seven and a half minutes as Holtkamp takes it forwards. Then it's with De Goody. Little show. She's hit well by her opposite number eight in Zoe Allcroft. Mark Atkin Davis looking to try and get in and get a turnover. Ball called out. It's good running from Paige Farris. Worcester Warriors winger now. Was there a little bit of room on the 
wide out as Bermudez goes in to get control of it. Grant sees nothing on, sends it back for Tutosi. Arms are up from Gallagher, a little bit more depth on it now. Shorter ball, that was a nice line from Grant. Round the corner they go, looking to continue to keep it alive. Delika Menin, it's loose and on the floor. That may well be a penalty because playing the ball on the floor there, was it Sarah Byrne? Spotted the opportunity to go for it. But once on the floor, she can't use her hands to shepherd it back. Canada showing their rugby smarts there. England were vulnerable in the breakdown. They know if they went in for the counter, they could win it, and they did. And the speed at which, once they turned it over, they moved that ball. They're really looking to go for it. This is the... So, diving on the ball off of it. I think it might have been the fall that the penalty. Big chance this then for Canada. Oh, they needed to get the line out right. England are going to try and steal, and they will successfully. Oh, well. Penalty call. Yeah, so England reacted first really well, but then got herself isolated um, at the back there, which is going to happen on a, on a turnover um, ball like that. But so Canada get another shot at it, but really they really need to nail their set piece today if they're to look in with a shout. Tessier, another one of the Exeter Chiefs, puts it back into the corner. It's first start for Tessier since her injury in April. Now we've got another penalty advantage to the Canadians and this is what happens when you put the pressure on a team. England have to watch their discipline in this sort of area. Just breaches calling numbers over to that far side, sensing it might be on, but oh, it's going to be Pelletier to go herself. Super work from the Canadian scrum half. Plays a rugby at Stade Bordeaux. Started the Elite One final in France. Laxa Forteza, her clubmate, was there. They won the title over there and full of confidence. Snipes beautifully to get the Canadians on the board. Really lovely decision um, off of that to snipe and go herself. You can see Packer drifts. She goes off. She's worried about the threat out wide and then actually just scooching through there. Really good spot and good speed. So you can see even better uh, detail in here as she picks. Lovely dummy. Goes across, sold, made that eye contact, really made it look like she was doing the pass and then sneaks through. Great individual try. Just what the game needed as well. There are plenty in the stands that will love waving the flags and seeing the Red Roses score tries, but the Canadians... They haven't had as long together. England have been in for this huge pre-season block of six weeks as we see Pelletier going over once more. Canadians only really been together nine days. They did have that Pacific Four Series competition in the summer, though. They have had some time together, but Kevin Rue, the coach, talked about the fact that they do know what the script is. They do know what's expected of them, but they have had that much less time in terms of regrouping. That has been nice, though, since they got off the plane. They've got a few Exeter Chiefs to show them around. Emily Titosi took them down to Exmouth Beach. Had a bit of a team dinner down there. Said the sun even came out. This is Kill Dunn. Looking to counter-attack run. Canadians have to release as soon as the knee gets to the floor and it's called a tackle as Atkin Davis opts out of the pass and takes it up. Packer for Aitchison. Burn on the crash ball. Nicely done, but well tackled by Forteza. Now, is there going to be a little bit of room on the outside? Talling is being asked to get after it. The kick was a little long, and Grant fends off a couple and then does well to keep it alive. De Goody, so often called in with the boot. But England offload well to find Hurd. Good position this for England to try and get going. Gallagher. Just slipped as she went into contact, but did enough to get past the gain line. And then this is Marley Packer. Familiar name. Captain Fantastic. Roland tipped on for Dow. Dow could hit the accelerator pedal here. Good line up of the tackle from Alex Tessier. 
knew where Dow wanted to go. Players not rolling away, though, for Canada, though, so England could keep going. Combination of Atkin Davis with Byrne. It's going to be two to three and finished by one. Mackenzie Carson, former Canadian herself, but front rows have absolutely no duty doing all of that, Cat Merchant. Uh, tell that to the England front row because they love a line break. They know their way uh, to the try line. It was really beautifully well played there as well. So I thought they'd miss the offload opportunity. I thought this is on, they've got to give it. But then actually managed to, she hits the floor, managed to offload from the floor so quickly. And then the powerhouse runner in cast and their footwork, handoffs, really great support line, good finish as well. And a really nice example of that offload off the floor can just be so, so dangerous. Alan Rowland then. <laughs> oh, just looked to hook it. <laughs> Gives England a ten point advantage. So we see those front rows working in tandem once again. Kenzie Carson, Canada debut was in November 2018. Clocked up three test appearances, but that birthright transfer process saw a Red Roses debut in the TikTok Women's Six Nations earlier this year. Caught a few of us out, in fact, to uh, follow the Red Roses. Didn't see that selection coming. The England coaches had uh, been all over it. Spotted the opportunity to look up Carson. She's scoring against her former nation Gallagher just needed to find that width and was helped along by Bermudez try scorer Pelletier looking but there is now a penalty advantage and England players this time not rolling away Canada really looking to um, hit that England ruck. They are knowing when it's on for a turnover, a well-timed ball out, diving on it, really reacting well. And actually a couple of penalties now England giving away uh, in their kind of half. So Canada putting that pressure on them, but England are going to have to think about numbers into breakdowns because they're just uh, that's the second time they've been turned over. De Goody did enough to make sure it came down on the Canadian side. McKinley Hunt, formerly of this parish, is an Exeter Chief, signed for the Saracen side in, in the summer. Packer going in to get that ball. So difficult to move. And in fact, she's done enough to bring it back. Oh. Referee Jenner are judging that England had won the ball, then couldn't get it back on their side. So in fact, it will be a put in to Canada. And a nod of the head from Marley Packer. She might nod, she won't be happy. <laughs> yeah, you'll see it in her face if, she, if she's not uh, happy. But an important set piece now, so a scrum, solid platform for Canada. So they're really going to want to utilise this. Canada just with Paige Farris to the left. Alex Tessier just lurking between 12 and 13 in the back line. Just a reset. Enormous amount of power in that scrum, and look at England exerting it. De Goody has to use it. Little juggle of the ball. Grant, now they get it back. Have they got the numbers here? Bermudez will take it up. Hurd look to try and get in and turn that over. Gabrielle Senft will then take it on. Another one of those who plays a bit of rugby in Bordeaux, as a few of this Canada side do, using that connection from head coach Kevin Rue. And then Florence Simmons taking it forward on her second cap. Plays at the University of British Columbia. Making that debut in Ottawa against New Zealand, no less, Flo Simmons. 
It's a steep learning curve, if ever there was one. But Canada, two metres out, have England turned it over? No, it is still there for Canada. A little bit of up the jumper stuff from the Canadians. The line is so close, not quite able to make it work just yet. Another bust as England stray offside. Canada look to go quickly. Pelletier is over it. Now another advantage, and England will need to be careful in this area. De Goody having a look for it. Going to the left, try scored. Tyson Bukaboom may well be the one to get it. Was it Gabriel Sempt? I think Bukaboom was the one. They were calm, they kept their composure, but in the same sense were relentless. They were coming around that corner, they were really pressurising England in their defence, so much so England gave a penalty away, so they were playing with an advantage uh, with it. Thirteenth try in Canadian colours for Tyson Bukaboom. She scored in that Rugby World Cup semi-final as well. She's joining Ealing Trailfinders, debut to come in the newly rebranded Premiership Women's Rugby, PWR. De Goody. Oh, just pushed that one past. Tell you what, the strike rate for both teams has been pretty good. Every time they're entering a 22, whether it's Canada or England, they're coming away with points, which is so crucial at high level uh, rugby. Well, it may not have been the most glamorous try from Canada, but they certainly all count. Who could have been using that physical advantage? Three Rugby World Cups under her belt. She fancies another one as well. nature of that delayed Rugby World Cup cap merchant. It's two years to go to the next one now. It's flying by, isn't it? Oh, it really is. Like, it, it, it doesn't feel like that long ago that we were yeah, over in New Zealand and now we're talking about the next one. So it's a yeah, really quick turnaround. That's why these sorts of fixtures, the launch of WXV, so important for these sides as they build, give players experience. Flo Simmons for Canada on the wing, a second cap. Fancy Bermudas getting a fifth. That's what it's all about. England then, another visit to the 22. Will it be another visit that yearns points for them? Carson driving well again. Players coming round the corner late. Byrne will be one of them. O'Donnell ready to add some power to her, but Byrne is brought to ground well. Packer snatches it out of the sky. Good hands from the Rugby World Cup winner. Aitchison a little deeper, that dink over the top this time. Wondered if the mark might have been the call, but Flo Simmons was ready to just run it forwards. There's a bit more depth, Tessier will wait to clear. Into the sunshine. Oh, it's going to sit up here, is it? Holly Aitchison is just going to watch it bobble to the floor, kill done. Bukaboom coming forwards and making the tackle on the England fullback, as is Claire Gallagher. Talling, eighth cap for the Sail Shark. Nearly a chance of the interception there. Ball just lost forwards. Yeah, I think Simmons showing her naivety there a little bit. You know, she's only on uh, her second cap, but most wings in that situation or back three, if you get that kick across, you've got to mark it, take the pressure off because the kick that then happened as a result of it. Um, meant that they were under a lot of pressure. It didn't make touch, they're starting to build. So little things like that, though, the details uh, are, are going to be what's going to put sides apart when they are so tight like this. England just taking in the deep breaths, as you can see. Just having a moment. 
And then don't forget, you could be in with a chance of watching the Red Roses against Ireland in hospitality in the upcoming TikTok Women's Six Nations. One fan, one of you will win four tickets for Saturday the 20th of April. It includes a three-course meal, unlimited, all-inclusive bar. Don't mind if I do. Scan the QR code on screen or head to the description in our YouTube and Facebook pages to enter. We'll pop that up again a couple of times for you in case you couldn't get your QR code snapper out in time. Good shot from England. Are they looking for a penalty here? They certainly get the advantage. They're going to be allowed to play from Aitchison to Hurd. Hurd knows one route and went straight with it. Packer, Aitchison, just a little softer one through there. No sufficient advantage coming. So we will come back for that scrum penalty. Sarah Byrne has just decided to wait there for everybody to come back and join her. There she is, clapping her hands. So like, come on, hurry up. <laughs> She's been doing lots of talking in the huddles. You may have seen some of the uh, footage that's come out of England training over the last few weeks. Sarah Byrne really finding her voice. I remember when she first joined the England setup, a relatively shy individual, but never shy in going forwards on the pitch and certainly growing into one of those key leaders under Lewis Deacon and Cope. Yeah, in the way that she plays, like she's naturally like leads by example, but that's what um, getting the number of caps are, that experience just brings, and you can feed it into this um, pretty experienced pack. Another big test for the Canadian defence. Allcroft calling the line, goes to the tail, straight down from Galligan, Carson, finding Hurd. Hurd, oh, the little grubber from Tatiana Hurd. That was nice. Tessier will have to touch it down. It'll be a goal line dropout. Lovely to see the little mix-up in the game from Tatiana Hurd that time. Well, you'd expect Hurd from, from club rugby. She's a carrier. She yeah, That's what she does well. She runs really hard. She hits up. So putting that little nudge in is just going to keep questioning uh, the defence. But uh, they're defending well so far. Tessier in particular, she's done some great defence today. Comes down for Aitchison. Big thumping hit from Tutosi on Byrne. O'Donnell. Lovely footwork. Aitchison again kept alive. Oh, that superb hands from backs and forwards alike. Allcroft setting England on their way. And then it's Kildun. Still going, Kildun. Ellie Kildun. A sensational score. All about the footwork of the Harlequin. But the ball getting to her from exemplary hands. Beautiful team try from the Red Roses. Yeah, she had no rights to score that whatsoever. She did fantastically with the footwork. So it's the, the hands to get it there. Heard under a lot of pressure. Three players in front of her. Look at this footwork here. One, two, three defenders beaten. And then still just leg driving across. Hint of looking like she dropped that o over the try line. That might be my eyesight. But like, so good footwork, changing the ball, hands as she goes. Aitchison knocks over the conversion. England get up to 24. But ball transfer, as you're doing footwork, so, so important. I think an underrated skill, uh, being able to move the ball away from the point of contact, enabling yourself to have a handoff, stay light on your feet, but lovely footwork uh, shown there from Kildan. Aitchison. So as you mentioned before, that's the second time now that Canada with their kickoff have got it just inside the 22, which allows England to kick it out. So um, miss, miss hitting it potentially on that kick, because you either want to kick it really deep, force them to kick it out, but you get a line up further off the pitch or short to compete, or at least make them play out. Of course, a Rugby World Cup winner, Cat Merchant, with us at Sandy Park. To Tosi. England going early. De Goody came crashing down, having taken that at the very top. Might have a word with their lifters, not to uh, completely abandon their station. But it is a free kick, and it's is Justin Pelletier who's over it. Into the hands, it's going to go. 
Delika Menin called on for what Delika Menin does. Then it's Courtney Holtkamp. One of those who Kath O'Donnell knows from those Loughborough Lightning days, knows the power game that she can bring. Bermudez looking for the option over the top. I think to set Paige Farris going. That was a little loose. England have to be careful that they stay on side. To Goody round the corner, but England driving the Canadian skipper back. It's there for Grant. Through the hands it goes for Tezza. Well met by Carson. Canada just holding a fairly narrow shape, and that was a little rushed. It's gone forwards, and England will have this knock-on advantage. Lucy Packer opts to just send Canada back towards their try line, and that is good territorial work. It's also relatively refreshing to see England nines kicking the ball. We haven't seen an awful lot of that in previous iterations of this team, certainly a lot under the Middleton era. It was get the ball away, get the ball away, but it's one of the things that we're told we will start to see a little more with this England team. Other people other than 10 kicking the ball, perhaps 9, 10, 12, 13 perhaps a little bit of a different shape for us to look at as well well it just keeps it. defenses honest when you've got more of a kicking game i mean okay. i'm a big fan of keeping ball in hand uh kick to compete and and to go for cross fields and things but in general keeping ball rather than kicking it away but if you've got skillful executions like that and that was a great one from packer just been knocked on by canada at the line out Error they could ill afford in this area. Bukaboom joining Ealing Trail Finders. Excited by being under the tutelage of Giselle Mather. Actually spoke about not wanting to be left behind as the game continues to go professional. Bukaboom, 32 years of age. And in, see in seeking that next World Cup, a fourth. Use it, use it she's relishing the chance to join the PWR. England look at a strike. Aitchison on the run around. Then the long ball for Abby Dow. Pinning her ears back, looking at that corner flag. Canadian defence doing enough to send her back in field. Then it's Packer going through the tackle of Gallagher. Now it might be on left again. It's going to be Packer. Lucy this time. Anything Justine Pelletier can do, she can do too. The dummy for the wide pass. Super from the Harlequin. Yeah, really nice. And I love the width of the ball. And this is what I was saying in the build-up to this game. The, the width that England can play with and the pass that Holly Aitchison gets out. Um, why that looping play. Look at the length of pass. And here, to be fair, not a good initial uh, defence, but a good defence uh, off the back of it because for that, Dow in that amount of space, how many times have we seen her score in, in those situations? So a good cover defence um, across to get to her, but then a great spot by Packer. She did, yeah, as you said, <laughs> copies uh, what was done earlier with that dummy, let him go and then, and then go through, even full dummy the cameraman there, I think. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Done a good job. No mistake from Roland either, and well, all of a sudden, the gap's starting to open up against Canada. Fifth try for England, and they lead 31 points to 12 after half an hour. Yeah, and, and the thing is, this comes from errors as well, like a, a Canada knock-on, then, you know, four phases later, and then England are scoring. So you just cannot make errors against this side because they are going to capitalise on, on them, especially if you're making errors in your own half. Tessier. Wants to get this, as we've said, just on the right spot. That's spot on. Packer, though. Oh, so destructive as a runner. Marley Packer making 20 metres. Sensational. Hint of forward that. Yes. I think it was spotted. Yeah. Apology from Holly Aitchison. 
Yeah, they, you know, they want to play flat because you want to get in behind uh, defensive, but that one just sneaking uh, slightly forward on there on that hard line, which is why it's really important whenever you have a flat line runner, you have someone deep out the back, you've got another option because if you do slightly overrun it or the ball's a little bit slower getting into the hands, you have someone else that you can hit out the back. England in danger of just engaging in the scrum a little early. Palatio waiting to get the ball in. Mentioned to, that she plays at uh, Stad Ball Delay. A few of those playing there as well. Gabby Sempt, another one. A connection with Kevin Rue, a man who has been back to his native France, Paris and Bordeaux, and he's done a bit of coaching there a couple of years ago as well. It is Pelletier, he winds up the big one for Grant. Then coming across from the right wing, just trying to create extra players there, but pass from Flo Simmons didn't quite go to hand. Tidy up job. Pelletier still asking those questions. Oh, Marley Packer, stunt woman roll to begin with, then gets hold of the ball, and there are two or three Red Roses jumpers streaking into the in goal area, but Claire Gallagher going to get hold of it it's going to be another goal line goal line dropout second consecutive start for uh, Claire Gallagher by the way and the first cap off the bench against New Zealand in the Pacific Four series in July then started against Australia captained a Canadian under 23 team against the USA a couple of weeks after that Australia match no Julia Shell she has signed for Ealing not quite involved with this Canada lineup, but still potentially in the frame for WXV. Roland, that step and hitch kick and the pace that she brings. Getting used to her role at 13 in the absence, of course, of one Emily Scarrett. Started there against France. That was a little bit loose. Dow thought she might get on top of that. Then it's been tipped backwards and. Canada taking the opportunity to come forwards. Yeah. Talling was sat down initially, but then the turnover walked into a Sarah Byrne trap. Yeah, that's that's some strength to bounce Talling there. Like really, really solid run as well. And another offload off the floor that we saw uh, within that to keep that ball alive. So really good reactions as well from Simmons to dive on the ball, make sure she got there first, and then the reaction to be able to lift off the floor so they could continue to play. Gabrielle Semp knocked Moana Talling so hard. She knocked out one of her own contact lenses. That's a G-force if ever I've heard of one. <laughs> yeah. Two eyes, everything's fine. Right, let's crack on. No Good win from Gallagher. Ball been spilled at the back, but it went backwards. So Marley Packer will play onto Hurd. Dow thought she might have finished it. Was absolutely thumped to the floor. But England still have the ball. Gallagher over it. Plays it away. Packer. Aitchison winding up the big one for Kildun, but it's gone forwards. Yeah, that I can see exactly what she was trying to do because England had a four-player overlap there. They were all wide. A lot of the Canada defence decided to line up on the blind side. They really need... It's the first time I'll say it about them. They needed to work harder there. They needed to recycle. They needed to push round because look at the overlap here. Really great defence coming up, blocking it off because on a 4v1, what can you do? You've just got to go up, put pressure on. So it forced the forward pass, but really Canada have to work harder there. They've got to fold round the corner, line up in that defence. England no doubt doing what they needed to do in terms of holding their width, but perhaps Helena Rowland could have come in a little tighter, taken a ball, Aitchison on the wraparound just to create, allow them actually not to have to force such a big pass, but Canada will breathe again. It won't be a sixth try for England just yet. In fact, it will be a free kick for Canada, and it's De Goody stepping around. Packer, good offload game 
to find Sempt. Haven't seen too much of the Canadian Flyers in action. Oh, what a rip that is from Abby Dow. And England immediately ready to get going. Talling all oh, flicked it on, but perhaps did so a little too quickly. No one quite ready for it. Grant wants to try and go on the outside of Helena Rowland. Good luck with that. Breach. Plays it back for Kildun. Oh, uh, Kildun once again showing the footwork. Back in field. Combining the back three beautifully. Breach there once more. But what a turnover that is from Canada. England will know that at the breakdown they're not going to get things their own way. Dummy initially given. Oh, just forced a little too much in the contact from Delika Menin. England line, they've called for five in it. Allcroft will dummy at the back and run to the front. Mom! Down it comes, Packer off for Atkin Davis, who was well met, just to slightly Mom, stifle whatever England had planned. Allcroft. Or was it Talling that time? Now a little more depth. Little one over the top for Aitchison. Oh, it's not going to find the line. Tessier did well to gather it, needs support. England tackling anything that moves in a black shirt at the minute and trying to get their hands on the ball too. Canada needing to send in the reinforcements to protect the ball. Eventually it's England who go in at the side. Yeah, England's given a couple of penalties away, a couple of free kicks away um, as well. So they'll want to clean that up because they, you know, they've shown what they can do when they have the ball. So they don't need to give uh, these penalties away. Thirty-three meetings between the two sides. England have won twenty-nine of them historically. No! Bukaboo from Titosi at the line out. Grant. Wrap around. Is it gonna work all the way? Tessier then joins. Looking to get a little bit more room to try and send Flo Simmons away. By the time it got there, England's defence had drifted sufficiently well enough. Sarah Hunter will be appreciating and enjoying watching her team shut down that space. Then it's McKinley Hunt. 33 appearances during her time at Exeter Hunt. Tessier wanted to try and get that away quickly off the deck. You are legally allowed to play it quickly off the floor. Pelletier not quite getting through the hole. De Goody. Look at her arm wrestle away past Atkin Davis. She's acquitting herself well on her 50th cap. Grant plays it on. That's a bit better from Canada. Need the support on the shoulder. And it arrives just in time. They will go the same way. And find a little bit more room for Fancy Bermudas. Ball back in field. That's nice for Forteza. Oh, but then the ball just lost. It was ripped away. England have the knock-on advantage. Heard. Opt out of the initial pass, makes the carry. Gallagher over it. Lucy Packer arrives. Aitchison. Just looks down the middle of the park. Gallagher and Tessier. Feels like a slightly aimless kick. Was Flo Simmons in front of the kicker even at that stage as Gallagher put it up? We'll play on regardless. Grant. Coming in from that wing position that she's normally more familiar with. Canada under all sorts of pressure to play it. And in fact, De Goody, in wanting to secure possession, had already lost her footing, so it will be an England penalty. Yeah, England getting um, their smarts now in that ruck as well and knowing when to go for it, when the turnover's on. I think it was Packer was the one to spot it, to drive over, make sure the ball came across but on that England side. Well, that will be the last act of the half as Holly Aitchison puts it into the stands and as far as the Red Roses are concerned, well, they will be pretty pleased with that first 40 minutes. Scoring five tries. 
demonstrating the new attacking shape and I'm sure Lewis Deacon will be pretty pleased with what he's seen. Two tries from Canada, certainly giving it everything they can at half-time at Sandy Park. It's England 31, Canada 12. Now a reminder of this little competition we'd like to draw your attention to. Chance to watch the Red Roses against Ireland in the hospitality. Of course, this is the second time the Red Roses will be playing at Big Twickenham. TikTok Women's Six Nations match then. One fan to win four tickets. Saturday the 20th of April will include a three-course meal, unlimited all-inclusive bar. And you can scan the QR code on the screen or get into the description if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. All the details are there to enter. What a day that could be. Well, five tries in that first half have certainly impressed. It is the modern vintage of Red Roses, who are giving it everything here at Sandy Park. And while Kat makes her way down to join Kenzie to look back at that first half, well, a number of former Red Roses have been making their way into England camp, visiting the current squad, giving them an insight into their international careers and passing on some of their knowledge. Firstly, welcome all the venture process along this evening. These evenings are really especially special for us. I'm now one of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people's why is about wanting to leave the shirt in a better place, and I guess we couldn't think of uh, a better way to understand that for us, again, keep it for us, for you guys, than to hear in where it's been. My other greatest experience was honestly and truthfully watching you guys at Twickenham oh, oh, last that, year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it was incredible. I think it's, I'd probably speak for all of us, just seeing how far the game has come yeah. from when we guys were playing and watching you guys do that standalone game at Twickenham. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my kids came to watch the game and they were just absolutely in awe. Absolutely in awe. So, yeah, two proud moments. Scoring a try and then watching a few bunch of fabulous yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Woo! Well, Kat Merchant is alongside me once again. You've made your way very quickly from your commentary position. Uh, before we get to talking about the game, there's a, a lovely piece we've just seen there. And, and those lovely words from Sarah Hunter talking about how most Red Roses like to leave the shirt in a better place than how they found it, I suppose. And, and that's a lovely thing, isn't it? How was it for you being back in the camp? Oh, do you know what? It, it was brilliant. It feels like no time has passed, though. You just <laughs> see it, it's the same old thing going, but new players doing it. And uh, yeah, I, I loved it. And I love how far the game has come from, you know, I did, um, I've done it when it was amateur, did it when it was semi-pro, got to do professional as well. And it's growing and it's fantastic. So, so I love the opportunity to go and do that. Yeah, absolutely. It was special to see that, that's for sure. Uh, let's get to talking about that first half then, shall we? Let's talk through the tries. We'll start with the Helena Rowland try. I mean, what a start for England. It didn't take long, did it, to get off the mark? Dream start in less than two minutes. It's a really good scanning of the pitch and a good chase as well. So the cross field kick, but it wasn't just that. It was the link play. Kill done, uh, able to, to offload it. Like, they're backing each other. Um, and then even Abby Dow as well, like, you know, that close to the try line might have finished herself, but manages to just lift it off the floor. Great offloads uh, and a score for Roland. So dream start for that England back line. Yeah, it certainly was. And that kind of continued, didn't it? I mean, three tries in that first 14 minutes. Pretty good going, right? Yeah, like just relentless and showing like what they can do. We knew, we know that they've got that line out threat. They've got the driven mall. Uh, they are so, so good at it. And it was Packer who came away with it that, that time rather than Lark, who often is at the, uh, at the end of those but showing their dominance and what they can do and then these lines are just so good the offload again coming up great running and for a prop as well Carson to be able to do that looked like she might have had a seven on her back uh, with the ability and the pace that she put on to that so great play from England absolutely are you, are you seeing signs of this new style of a play and approach that yes. we were speaking about pre-match yeah definitely there's been more kicking uh, cross field but also from Packer at nine as well but it's the offloading and rather than people just carrying as far as they can there's a lot more awareness of passing it earlier so they're passing before they're getting tackled uh, and then that's what's getting them in behind and getting those tries. So it's lovely to watch them play like that. All right, we're going to take a look at Ellie's try next. Another nice piece of work from England. 
Yeah, so um, great uh, reaction as well to like come in and it was so needed um, as well at the time to counter uh, with it. But it was a lovely dummy um, around the corner and a good spot to, set, to send uh, the defence away and to go so nice. I've got to say, you're doing remarkably well because it's tricky to see that monitor there, isn't it? Well, because I think I might have just spoke <laughs> for the wrong one. Yeah, I thought that was the Canada try. Um, so, yeah, I can't see it. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit... We're not complaining about the sunshine yeah, here, are we? No. But the monitor's a little bit glary. But, yeah, so oh, I thought it was the Canada one next. But uh, Kildon footwork was sensational. She had, uh, I said it up there, had no rights to, to score that try. The footwork and the pace that we've seen. She did it in another run later on as well. She's really been able to show her pace today. Yeah, absolutely. I think we are going to see that Canada <laughs> try now. Now uh, you know what happens, yeah. <laughs> All right, apologies. We're actually going to see Lucy Packer's try now. So we'll take a look at that. Here we go. So I'm going to move closer. You do it, what so you I need to do. It's across, very tricky to see. it's really difficult to... It's glorious sunshine here, isn't it? But yeah, it is it's difficult to sunshine, see. But really difficult to, to see it. Well, from where you were sitting alongside Nick, yeah. as, a, as a half as a whole, were you impressed with what you saw? Uh, so, so impressed. For Canada as well, like absolutely brilliant to come out. It would have been so easy when England had come out off the mark to to sort of like sit back but they've gone at it aggressively they've massively stepped up they've come in with two tries of their own really good well worked ones as well and they are still putting pressure on this England side absolutely which is what we want to see uh, well Kat it's great to have you with us we've actually got another guest joining us now in the form of Susie Appleby uh, Exeter Chief Head Coach and of course fin former England number nine great to see you Susie nice how are you enjoying here. your time today uh, from the stand something a bit different for you well yes and no uh, yeah, I'm mean, next to my usual coaching box up there, which is brilliant, but in a different capacity, obviously, supporting England. But yeah, it's a, it's a great game, isn't it? You know, both sides, their intent to play is fantastic. Uh, interesting with the elements, how Canada deal with that wind on their back slightly and whether they can gain momentum and, you know, take advantage of a bit more possession, hopefully. And we should see a decent second half, I think. Absolutely. And of course, lots of Chiefs on display yeah. today. We should talk about Maisie first, though. Yes. She's set to receive yes. her first senior cap. Just how proud are you to be here to witness it's that today? An unbelievably special day for the club because we're three years in the making and Maisie is the first um, product, if you like, of, of our pathway and who's coming through. So she's come through the last three years. She's grown into the under 20s captaincy and quite rightly and deservedly, she's going to, fingers crossed, take the field in this second half. She's the hardest worker. She's a fantastic person and player. The whole of her super fans are here, family and friends. So listen, it's a really special day for the club and obviously for Maisie. And obviously it's not just the England girls of Exeter players there. Yeah. We've got your contingency with Canada as well. How impressed are you with what they've put out so far? I'm really liking what Canada are doing. You know, it, it's, it's, I'm sure you've touched on it already. Um, it's a fully professional outfit in England versus a a very amateur outfit in Canada, but very much up there at the top of the world, Canada. They've only been together a week, okay? And um, and they're doing really, really well. They've got really powerful forwards. You've seen McKinley Hunt that did play here. Sophie De Good always puts herself around, you know. Tyson Bookaboom scoring that try. Really impressive forwards. And as I said, you know, if they can start to connect a little bit more in their, um, in the backs play then i think we could see a decent second half but um you know this fancy bermudas in the 13 shirt you know but but you're quite right you know we've got two or thirds of the front row of canada play here so they're at home um so you know foot in both camps for very much um obviously an england supporter today definitely you know, I was thinking that's a funny one because I imagine there's lots yeah. of Chiefs fans in the stands who probably don't quite know who to support today. Uh, but of course, we've got to support our Red Roses. It's great to see them. Well, we do. Doing but, well. the, but the fact that all these people are here and that's the appetite for the game in the Southwest, and that's why we've grown as Chiefs, but we've grown as England as well. Where every time they come here, everyone piles in here because they love it. They love rugby in the Southwest. They love rugby at Chiefs, and they don't really care who they're supporting. <laughs> they just love it, boys, girls. And, um, you know, that's the best thing about the days like this. So, listen, the, the game is growing. Two years' time, we're hosting a, wor a World Cup, and it's going to be hosted here as well. So, listen, there's so much excitement, but focus on today. 
huge England performance, hopefully, but hopefully a really good second half to look forward to. We will keep focusing on today, but for just a moment, I want to shine the spotlight onto you, Susie, because yeah. we speak about Maisie, weren't we, and, and how special today is for her. But if we can go back to 1994, I believe, when you made your debut. Yeah, you're right. Is that right? Yeah, I hopefully I I've so. got that correct. I think so, yeah. Can you remember how you felt on that day? Um, and, and I imagine Maisie will be well, feeling similarly. You know, cats are similar. You know, it's the most amazing day, isn't it? You know, when you take the field for your first time. I was. I was trying to think back, my memory is not very good. I actually got to start my first cap, which was amazing. There was a difference, there was a shift in personnel, so I started the game at, at Scrum Half because Emma Mitchell was away. Um, it was up in London, and it's a whole world away from where we are now in a really good way for the current era. But what we had then was really, really special. I'm sure Cat will agree, you know, Cat's a World Cup winner. What has gone past in the last 20 years is just unbelievable, the transformation. But it doesn't matter when you take the field in an England short or how many times you take it. It's as special as the very first time, you know. You see Sarah Hunter up there in the coaching box, the most capped England player ever. That is unbelievable, isn't it? So, listen, great accolades going on around the world, but yeah. I can vaguely remember that. So yeah. thanks for taking me back. <laughs> I apologise. I hope it's you fine. don't mind. It was a special day. Yeah. Uh, with Susie, fantastic to speak yeah. with you. We'll let you head Lovely. back and enjoy I the rest of to Lou. your day <laughs> as Lou Meadows joins Hi. us. Lou, How are you doing? great to see you. you Wonderful too. to have you joining us. Thank you. A great start for England. Yeah, it's a really positive one. I'm really proud of the girls and how they've gone after it. There's um, a lot of attack variety, which is exciting to see, and I'm sure Canada are working out how they're going to cope with that. So yeah, a really positive and strong first start. And what can you be expecting from the second half then? What are you going to be asking of them? So we want to up the tempo even more. We think we've got more to give and we want to really look after that ball when we have it. So possession is really crucial. So we want to make sure when we put in that variety, the kicks in behind, etc., we're getting that ball back. So possession is going to be the one. And we've just been speaking to Susie a moment ago about yeah. the incredible fans that are here with us today. They're certainly noisy, aren't they? Is that a real help to you as players? Oh, it's fantastic. Like, you can hear them everywhere and it gives you that extra lift. You just want that, do you know what I mean? That extra support, the noise just brings that energy and it gives you that extra little bit that you need to just make that additional tackle and run that extra little bit faster. <laughs> so yeah, it's absolutely, that's for sure. Uh, Lou, thank you so much for speaking with us. We'll let you get back thank to you so much. the action. And Kat, likewise, you need to make your way back to your commentary position. We'll see you at full time. Uh, for now, though, it's time to take a little preview at this Rose. Of course, this isn't the only England match taking place today. England men will be hoping to make it three wins from three when they take on Chile in France later on. And of course, we'll all be supporting in the story behind this Rose. England, what does it mean to you? Hard to define, isn't it? Cup of tea, pint of ale, chai latte, protein shake. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Like this team, made up of absolute units, speedsters, maestros, even the odd little fella. Players from everywhere that play from anywhere. Mohawks, optional. Five, non-negotiable. It's all good. Differences are what makes us us. It's when we come together, the magic happens. Listen, you know that rose? Yeah, that one. Whisper it. It's not originally from here. But it's what it means to us that's important. And it represents this beautiful, weird bundle of culture we call home. And that, that's what we play for. A big day for England rugby. Big day for Canada. Two tries on the board for the visitors. This is the first of two tests, of course, as well. They will be at the Stonex, home of Saracens in North London next week. If you haven't got your tickets, make sure you get onto englandrugby.com to come along. But England back out for the second half. And Cat Merchant still showing that clean pair of heels straight up the gantry and back into commentary. I did actually run up the stairs well done. to make it. <laughs> How good was Susie Appleby, by the way? Oh, so I'm good. I'm voting for her on pundit panels every week. Yeah, she was fantastic. Like, um, not as stressed as game day, <laughs> so yeah. it's nice yeah. to see her relaxed, Maybe. calm, spoke really eloquently. Maybe that's the key. And to hear from Lou Meadows as well, England's new attack coach, who is... Uh, 
sounded happy with the effort that the players have been put in, but thinks there could be quicker tempo, and certainly one of those who will provide that is Ali Kildun. Passes it away. England in midfield, can they get the offload away? Not quite, but Packers there, will ask a question around that fringe, and then Aitchison, who will straighten. Atkin Davis straight in there with Roland to secure it. Allcroft steps off the right foot. Winner of the league with Gloucester Hartbury this season, first time, or last season, I should say. Byrne just wanted to get on that outside shoulder, but couldn't quite get away. Big one over the top from Hurd. Just apologises to her teammates. Just a little force that time. Yeah, one of the main differences, I'd say, in these two sides so far is that the England passing has pretty much been spot on. That one, one of the rare ones that wasn't straight to hand, whereas Canada, the passes have just been slightly off or a little bit behind, so they haven't been able to really put the full pace that they can onto the ball. Another loose one in terms of the Canada line-out, but Gallagher will reclaim and Grant just has one foot scragged Bermudez long ball out to the left that's nice to find Farris who's in a bit of room kill done showing she's got it defensively as much in much as in attack well she didn't get out of the way enough gives away the penalty Tessier try and take a few meters into that England 22 yeah, Farris has gas to Burma, speaking about quick players, but the footwork and to go around, so Kildun does really well initially to make the contact, but then ends up getting trapped in. Ref deems it not enough effort to, to roll away and get out of there, so Canada, a really good platform now with a line out inside the 22. That's much cleaner from a Canadian perspective. Then it was just lost by Pelletier. Buka Boom had broken away, you could see they were building something there, but just the little moments of ring rust which ultimately against a team that professionally as Susie Appleby says at half time have been together for the last six weeks compared to a Canada team that have been together for just over a week well these are going to be the areas where perhaps we see it most well yeah it was a really good point because I didn't even really think about that but yeah it, it is massive to say that this Canadian team hasn't been um, together all that long in camp they haven't had six weeks and they're putting together a performance they've scored two great tries against uh, England um, so yeah really credit to them when you take everything into consideration as well not seeing a sense of many changes but Canada have made one change up front Olivia de Merchant Third all-time appearance maker with uh, Maria Gallo. Well, she comes on for a 56th cap to Merchant into that front row. Ball in from Packer. Controlled by Allcroft. Was a bit of pressure under that. Was that knocked forwards by Aitchison? Just gathered. Carson waits as one option as Marley Packer takes it on. Galligan helping with the drive. Rosie Galligan just earning a tenth cap today, but she's started to become one of those names you just expect to see on the team sheet. Feels like she's been around longer than just entering double figures of caps for this international. To Tosi Waits. Plenty of volume from Marley Packer as she comes in. Oh, it's another just little lost bit of connectivity at the back of the lineup for Canada. Normally, really good set piece specialists. Yeah, they're going to be disappointed with that. Two opportunities um, for attack. The initial lineout's good. It, it, it is forced a little bit there. You want to have it nice and soft down to the player running onto it, but it's a bit of an awkward almost um, basketball pass uh, across.
58 cap for Sarah Byrne, the Bristol there. Penalty advantage, Packer for Aitchison, missed pass for Rowland, Rowland on for Kildun, wanting to get the ball early for Abby Dow to give her a go on the outside. Simmons did well. Heard, first receiver, and then on for Talling. Aitchison, back line all knew that that was going to be a kick through. Jess Breach got there, but knew not to touch it with the hands, didn't want to knock it on, and Heard was able there, therefore, to tidy it up. Carson, quick ball, missed pass over the top for Sarah Byrne in the wide outside channel. It's a lovely ball for Byrne, rampaging up. The right-hand touchline, Kill Dunn will go in a scrum half. Aitchison was well marshalled. Heard. Canada not quite able to get the numbers in and get it away. Carson will have to play scrum half. Marley Packer in a little triple collection of players in the pod in the middle of the field. Now Roland, then Zoe Allcroft loitering out in that wider channel. England just looking to put those singular forwards in that wide channel in a change of their formation and pattern as they attack as Roland shows fleet footwork to get around her opposite number then Gallagher this is building nicely this is the game plan that Lewis Deacon's been working on with them and it's into the hands of Carson from Hurd Kildun hand up to receive it but Hurd comes around the corner she's been such an asset in that 12 shirt to give England that go forward like an extra back rower second row comeback rower Zoe Allcroft then, and it's on from Packer to Talling. Is there the turnover there though for Canada? Really well worked, a goody in there. And also Olivia de Merchant. That was crucial at that moment with England's tails up. Yeah, England were really building into that, the, the, the plays that they were doing. So a really important turnover on the, the line. But it, it's been a little bit of a pattern, England, uh, not quite putting in as much numbers sometimes as needed. But you can see how quickly uh, they're on the ball, their hands in. Brilliant um, turnover uh, within that and a very, very important uh, one as well. Emily Tutosi. Can Canada get this line out functioning? Down from De Goody. England look to counter drive, but they keep it tight this time as Bukaboon comes forwards and now they get a penalty advantage for it. De Goody. Allcroft getting straight into her opposite number. Gallagher. Kill done. Kill done coming forwards. Dow. Heard. Has Roland on the outside. And we know how quick Helena Roland is. Gets the hand out, but defensively was able to do a job. But it's actually gone against Flo Simmons for the high tackle. Tell you what, Canada defending out wide really well because there's been a couple of times now the likes of Thau have had it out wide and they've managed to marshal it and stop them because so often we've seen England going around the outside of teams and tearing up. So, so fantastic. Um, defence there, that one going in high I think. Yeah, and Tessier has just copped one in the collision Tessier just comes in there oh, it's collided with her teammate's shoulder there Forty-fifth cap for Tessier Just a collision with one of her own players. Tessier can, of course, step in at fly half. There are effectively four tens in this Canada squad. That's one of the reasons Julia Shell has been uh, asked to just stand aside for a moment before potentially still being involved in WXV. And just in case those of you watching on are going, what is this WXV thing we're talking about? Well, it is the new women's international competition potentially the forerunner for what they might try and do in the men's game who knows maybe women's rugby might take the lead after all but uh, yeah three tiers of competition increasing the number of internationals and talking to Kevin Rue this week well Canada normally in a year after a rugby world cup would play perhaps four or five internationals because of WXV well the top three 
in the TikTok Women's Six Nations and the top three of the Pacific Four Series. They will come together and play a cross-pool tournament in New Zealand in October. So it is the likes of England, France and Wales, and they will go and take on New Zealand, Australia and Canada. And because of those three games taking place next month, well, Theresa England have put another couple of internationals in as a warm-up. So for teams like Canada, it's increasing the number of internationals this year to nine. And we have WXV2 taking place in Stellenbosch, involving the likes of Scotland, Italy, South Africa, and more besides. And then WXV3, that one is being played in Dubai, continuing the development of the women's game on the international stage. England Mall, not going forward, so the caller once comes to Lucy Packer. Plays it to Hurd. Aitchison finds kill done. It's been a really bright spark in England's back line. Plays it away. Lark Atkin Davis. Stopped in her tracks. Allcroft. Little tip back inside for Marley Packer. That's been lost forwards. Canada might have the chance to play. Tessier looks over the top. Finds England's backs are just a little too shallow, so it was a good option to stick it over their shoulder, but will potentially allow some counter-attack opportunity for Kildun. But Simmons, oh, she's just missed the pass. Ball went backwards. Menin. Buka boom. Tutosi. Emily Tutosi talking this week about how that... Oh, does England get the penalty? How that Rugby World Cup semi-final loss was one of the toughest emotional outcomes that any of the team have felt. They were in that game as well. That's what no doubt hurts so much. 26-19 it was at Eden Park that day. But England are looking to make the changes and you can see them coming on now. That's Natasha Hunt with the 21 on the back. Also the other front row changes, Connie Powell. Maud Muir among them and Hannah Bottomer as well. So it's a whole new England front row. Lark Atkin Davis on the occasion of her 50th cap will take her leave. And Natasha Hunt back on in an England shirt. Just given a handful of minutes at the end of that Grand Slam game at Twickenham. But on now, and arguably, this slight shift of the England game plan is the sort of shift that might well start to play into the hands of a player like Natasha Hunt. Down from the line-out. England opting straight to drive this time. Canada once again hold it up well. They get the caller once again. England look to set themselves positionally slightly different this time. Hunt has a look. there for Packer in for O'Donnell makes a good key couple of yards to put England on the front foot Kath O'Donnell and then Gallagher ball is there Hunt looked for the little chip over oh and it just went forwards from England back line were ready to tear onto it So Reddit, Canada defence, Reddit, they knew what was coming, they flew up and they had and stopped. Well, the nature of seeing that attacking three-quarter line right on the toe, ready to chase through, they knew what was coming. Defensively, as Cat Merchant says, Canadians were ready to stop it at source, which they managed to. And the dead ball lines at Exeter are massive, because I don't think necessarily most teams would, would want to put a kick in uh, they're a bit high risk when you could just keep it in hand but with the size of the dead ball there is a bit more of an opportunity uh, to do those <laughs> Natasha Hunt there back in the lineup. one of those players really brought through and nurtured by one Gary Street and uh, well anyone might know Gary's had a little spell in hospital recently, so uh, all of us here 
sending Streety our very, very best wishes for a speedy recovery. We're all right behind you. Loud blast on the whistle, it's going to be a Canada penalty. They're going to tap and go. Kick comes forward from Gallagher, just a little off the outside of the boot. I think she wanted to put her boot straight through that and get a little bit more yardage, but Kildun, oh, still breaking tackles, still making metres. Hunt, just not quite held by Muir, but O'Donnell was happy to be the doorstop. Breach, popping in at first, receiver, Connie Powell taking no prisoners, straight through Pelletier. Two Gloucester Hartbury teammates playing together there as Hunt goes on for Allcroft. Little threaded ball through from Aitchison. Maddie Grant looking over the top, but Dow is there. Remarkable story, Abby Dow working her way back from that injury in order to make that Rugby World Cup. Allcroft. Hunt. There was a dummy runner, and it's allowed their space. And Rowland now plays it away to her centre partner in Hurd. Back into the middle, Maud Muir, Galligan plays it quickly away. That was beautifully done, and Connie Powell is in the hole. Has support on the shoulder from Ellie Kildun, who's looking to step back in field once more. Oh, Ellie Kildun, she does it again. How is it done? It's Ellie Kildun. Such a great, strong finish um, as well. And the power for the line break as well initially. Just so, it's the speed of ball, and this is forwards as well, uh, linking with bats. Look at that beautiful line, the footwork, the scanning, wondering where to give it. And then here, two defenders beat um, already uh, by Kill Dunn, and then it's the leg drive afterwards. There, speed of ball, lovely. Pick up, hands, go across this line as well. Always scanning the difference. Spots the over chase from Kill Dunn. Uh, killed on spots it, sorry, steps in, great work. Conversion's good from Rowland. You have to credit the Canadian defence because England came flying out the traps in that first half, scoring there. Five tries. It's taken them a while to get on the scoreboard, second half, but what a cracker. Look at the strength and determination. And it's the flatness of the pass as well. To, the, the reason they're making these line breaks is forwards running those hard lines and they're running them at such an intensity and the pass is lovely and flat, guides across, and then when you've got finishers out wide like Kill Dunn, it just all starts to click. Allcroft worked hard to get back and take it. Then give them the go forwards, but actually it's... Connie Powell, he gives the penalty away. Taking players out off the ball. Trying to help, help secure it. The goody. Can Canada execute their mall any better than England? They certainly made a few more metres. This is rumbling towards the Red Roses try line. It's Canada over the line. Superb. Emily Titosi. Well, how many times is she at the bottom of those? It's an excellent score. She does it here for Exeter Chiefs alongside the likes of Delika Menin and Alex Tessier now. But that is the catch and drive masterclass from the Canadians. And this is, you know, what we've been expecting from them from their set piece. And they've had a couple of line outs not go well, but when it counted in an area where they really needed to score, they did. So they've just come 
flying into that. The speed is going. There's no way uh, England are going to be able to stop that. So a great score. And look at the reaction. As soon as they've scored, they sprinted back. They are set. They are ready. This game is in no way over to them. They really are coming at this. The goody for the conversion. It's good. Thirty-eight, nineteen now. Stitosi gets the score, her tenth try for Canada. Seen Sarah Beckett enter the field for England, and Kath O'Donnell, one that makes way. O'Donnell, one of those who I think we'll be seeing a lot more of in an England shirt, been fit and raring to go. Loves the technicality in the lineout, bringing plenty of power. Sarah Beckett will be coming on. Both spent time at forward Waterloo. Beckett now. Hold left, hold left. Gloucester Hartbury player on, on for cap number 31. Aitchison has a scan. Kill Dunn was in her pocket, racing to go, and the ball's just sat up over the top of, well, over the top of Gabby Sempt. Oh, and she's swatting away England players. De Goody, quick pick straight into. Jess Breach. Replacement Letitia Royer onto the field as well as Canada ring those changes. The goody pushes people away. She's the number eight, she's the kicker, she'll play scrum half if she has to as well. Speaking of which, there is Pelletier. Olivia Apps, replacement, is onto the field too. Miss pass, that's nice. Farris getting on her bike, back in, back in field for Olivia Apps. And Apps. Canadian sevens player, always managed to get around Abby Dow as well. Tackle! Second attempt from Dow will stop the replacement. Totosi over the head. This could be another chance for Canada. They've got a three on two here. Oh, the pass might be a little forwards, is it? Back in field it goes. Maddie Grant to score the try. It will be given. Sensational score from Canada. England worked really hard and pulled wide. And it's Grant with the finish. And they had to work hard for that, didn't they? They went from one five-metre channel right across to the other one, across a whole full set of hands with that. So beautiful ball to Farris. Really, really good. Pass back inside. And then here, the footwork, determination to go around Dow on the first attempt. But Dow, to be fair to her, gets back, tackles her from behind. And then the ability to shift this ball wide. Not perfect handling, but didn't matter. Goes across this one, potentially looked a tiny bit forward, but then the um, deemed fine, referee's right in line with it, can see that it's flat, and then that back inside pass as well, the absolute killer blow uh, to get the score. Super. Conversion, not quite from De Goody that time. That's definitely one of those tries that it's entertaining enough that it wasn't forward enough. For me <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> agree um because yeah really good hands and the, the ability to get it wide and go across but yeah that back inside pass it was covered by kill done so she would have gone into touch that was the important one and the awareness to know and the support line to get back on her inside that's where they're, they're, they're getting there getting it from but now look very different game 38 24 canada not giving up at all no and they're currently leading the second half in terms of scores on the board 12 points to seven since the break in honour of Canada. Gabrielle Semp unable to hold it. And they're getting going here. Sophie de Goody's right through. Has she got the support? Gives the ball away. It's brilliantly held by Letitia Royer. Up to England's 22 and Canada are coming visiting once again. Pelletier getting back into the scrum half roll. She's been out in the back line with apps coming on but this time England get the reward of the turnover 
And they just need a moment to breathe, the Red Roses. Yeah, I think they're thinking, what, what is happening here? They need to calm it down because actually this Canada side apps has made a real difference since they're uh, coming on. Uh, she's been fantastic in, in her footwork and that pace and across, but amazing hands um, out wide as well. And uh, Roya took a beautiful pass. I thought it was potentially going to get knocked on, but she manages it to, to gather it and get the support. But uh, England can take a breath. <laughs> Defended, they now get their chance. Olivia Apps just on your shot a moment ago. Just a third cap at 15. She's been a key part of the Canada Sevens team for quite a while. Helped them with qualification for Paris and the Olympics next year. Talked really openly and bravely about her experience with Alopecia as well. Really inspiring individual. Now this is Canada again. England defensively just... Deciding to defend a little narrow, and Grant takes the ball on the wider channel. Aitchison will chase that back towards her try line. Four Canada shirts there to try and track her down. Oh, that's an amazing little pirouette from Aitchison. And Aitchison still going forwards, but the call she got on the shoulder was from Pelletier. And she's passed it back to Canada, who will have the ball on the edge of the 22. Plenty of white shirts around the ball. Down below, England looking to make further changes as Jones and McDonald are there with one Maisie Allen. Apps wasn't able to get through the fringes with Marley Packer watching her. De Merchant for Canada. Clear out is affected. De Goody wrestling her way through. Gallagher doing her best to bring her down. Apps flat pass to send Royer onto it. Then another chance for Menin. Familiar ground for Delika Menin at Exeter Chiefs. Pushing forward in a black shirt of Canada. Rather than under Susie Appleby this time. But Canada coming forwards again. Replacements making a real difference, it feels. Connectivity just getting there. De Goody went. Now a chance for Semft is there. Bottomham was a little bit high. Advantage being played. They were certainly under pressure there. So they will come back. What will be the decision? Oh, I thought it was a high tackle. In fact, it's Connie Powell. So apologies to Hannah Bottomen. What's going to be the decision here for the Canadians? Certainly their work at Mall Time has been working, so it is going to be a tap and go. Menin stopped short. Apps. Players running around the corner. Oh, it was a difficult one. For Buka Boom to take. Canadians just rushed it. Almost nobody at home momentarily for Canada. Hunt has it. Will look for the box kick clearance upfield. That is exemplary from Mo Hunt. I think a let off there for, for England because really Canada, their scrum um, was really good earlier and we found that England actually gave a penalty away um, in the scrums. They could have gone for that. Well, this is a huge moment in the life of one Maisie Allen. Delighted to have heard from Susie Appleby at half-time. And alongside her, Meg Jones as well, returning to England 15s. But make no mistake, the big cheer you can hear around Sandy Park is for one of their own, earning their first cap as a Red Rose. Former captain of the England under-20s, Maisie Allen takes her position in an England shirt. And it's Aitchison tallying. Meg Jones, or is it Claudia McDonald? And now it's Ellie Kildun popping up again. Hunt, Aitchison, tallying again. Similar formation of players, and Meg Jones is waiting outside Aitchison again, but just a little deeper as Gallagher receives it. She's played well. Hunt for Muir. Just needed the support of her fellow front rowers around her. Roland wanted to put the ball on the toe. Didn't quite work out. Powell will rescue it. Quick pick off the floor from Claudia McDonald, who, of course, can double up as a scrum half where needed. Natasha Hunt. In the driven back, but the ball went back, so 
Aitchison can play it. Bottoman goes straight. Now they're going to go back from where they came and Beckett, accompanied by Allen, helps the clear out. Muir again, tip on for Bottoman. Powell is there. Hunt with Jones as first receiver here and is going to put it on the floor. Oh, it sits up beautifully for Rosie Gallagher, who then finds Helena Rowland. And on the outside is Claudia McDonald. Oh, McDonald, is she able to stay in field? Helena Rowland with the score. And now she dots it down. England keeping the ball alive. Thumbs up from Rowland again. Might have been a little tickle of the whitewash on the sideline. We will have a little look. But they certainly love that around these parts. Oh, the, that pass back inside that off in case we'll, we'll look if it's touched or not but the pace that um, Claudia McDonald is able to put onto the ball here she goes for it gets the hand off I think she's all right I think she's okay there manages to get the offload back inside and across but fantastic play from England and again showing this new ability to kind of put it um, through and then forwards linking with backs good link play and then across here, this will be the one we'll be able to see it. Oh, that's very, very close. Very close, isn't it? Well, nothing clear and obvious. Was the little pinky toe possibly touching it? I think if we're signing up to the Jouet Jouet playbook, we're calling that a sensational try. Yeah, definitely. And probably one all. It was maybe a forward pass earlier for the Canada one, and that potentially touched there. So one all uh, in terms of the, the close margins within it. But a great try from England, an important one from England, because so far Canada have really been the ones putting the pressure on in this half. So for England to come back, score a beautiful try like that one, really important. Second try for Helena Rowland. Gets the conversion as well. It's got 20 points in the game. Hunt away for kill done, making an awful lot happen whenever she has the ball. Beckett dummied the ball and gets away from replacement Alex Ellis, the Saracen. Deeper for Roland, trying to get away from Pelletier. Canadian scrum after did really well there. Hunt, Aitchison. Little grubber towards that left touchline, and that'll do. They absorb the Canada pressure so well, and then able to just, it just bounces off them, and they go, right, we're in our element now. We've had our five minutes, we've possibly got caught out and switched off, so, so great um, for them to come back, get that try, and now just look really composed in their style of play. Well, this is another big moment in terms of this match, in terms of Canada this time. Number 23 coming onto the field, Magali Harvey. Harvey onto the field. She signed for Stade Bordelais to join a few of her countrywomen. Last played November 2018. Five years ago, got in touch with Kevin Rue and said she wanted to be part of things. He gave her a number of things that he wanted to see from her, work she wanted to do. As Claudia McDonald shows what she can do. Now the ball's been intercepted forwards from Maddie Grant. And Harvey fulfilled all of what Rue wanted to see and has earned her spot. And she takes her place on the right wing of this Canada side. Apps. Tessier. Is there going to be room to find Harvey? Yes, she is straight onto the ball. Former World Player of the Year in 2014. You may remember she was also very well known for her very typical conversion technique, just standing next to the ball, one step, bang, hits it over. Scored a world of a try against France as well in that competition. To Goody. 
takes it forwards, needs the support to get there. Apps. Under pressure, but gets it away. Replacement Gillian Bogue. Capilano rugby player on her 22nd cap. Apps tried to play it back in field. It was a little loose. It did go forwards from England in the process. Canada will have the ball. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, the Magali Harvey try against France, it was pretty much full pitch, wasn't it? She really went like 90 odd metres. Uh, it was a crazy one. Just getting confirmation on screen of just over nine and a half thousand packed into Sandy Park. Super support for the Red Roses. Great to see Harvey back onto the field. Canada striking, looking to go with Farris on the left this time. May have the 14 on her back, but she is over on that left wing. Then a little shorter ball for Osiris for Boda. So often in the starting lineup, but making do with the space on the bench this week. Ball floated from Taylor Perry, who's back from that ACL knee injury. Another one that we're Delighted to see back. That was sustained last year in training just before that first Rugby World Cup match. So Perry back into the action. And now Semft Harvey finding some empty turf. Might have just put a little bit too much on that. But in fact, it is going to just roll too far. Going to give you a couple of minutes to muse over your player of the match, Catherine Merchant. Got it, on it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be coming to you in a few minutes for that. Catherine, I feel like I'm in trouble. Well, oh, you know, <laughs> it's a very formal request. <laughs> yeah, that's true. In from Hunt. Scrum started to wheel. Hunt's been told to use. Jones. Oh, lovely from Jones. Kicking away. And then the long pass out wide for Claudia McDonald, who's got open field in front of her. It's a 100 metre run style from Claudia McDonald, aiming for the corner. Oh, it's a superb covering tackle from Magali Harvey. What a moment of defence. McDonald pinning her ears back like she was in the 100 metre straight. So much to unpack from that. The pass from Jones, the line break from Jones, and then Claudia massively would have thought she was in there. I think everybody else thought she was going to score that, but Magali Harvey from the other wing, tracking across to be able to get that down. That is some speed. What five-year gap? Like, <laughs> she's well, straight in there. Extraordinary from Harvey. Back in field from Apps, Buka Boom. Pushing people down. Tessier. Now it's with McDonald. She might not have got her breath back since then. Passes it away for Kildun. Dow is pointing at the gap that she wants Kildun to run through. Kildun's still going. Oh, the full work. Once again. Oh, England. I thought the referee was saying England had lost it, but it's there for Hunt. Looks left. Option not on. So finds Powell. Then quick ball. Bottoman. Look to just try and tip it on, but it's come forwards. And there will be that knock on advantage as Maisie Allen takes it to ground. Goodness me, the noise here if she was able to get on the score sheet in the last few minutes. Jones, another big one of those passes. Out for Beckett. Beckett looking for the option. Oh, 
Just had McDonald coming round off the right wing, looking for it. There for Powell. Big upright collision with Letitia Royer. Referee is asking the TMO to have a look at it. And in fact, we will just have a pause here. Clara Munarini, let's just listen into this conversation. Are you thinking any more than a penalty just here? No, no okay. that's fine. No, no. Okay, Very perfect. Yeah, yeah. Matteo, how are you? How are we checking that? Lauren Jenner just having a conversation about whether there should be okay. anything more so than a penalty, a penalty for a second field, consecutive for a deliberate knock-on. Deliberate knock-on. PK knock on. only. And same here, PK only. Okay. What do you what would you like? In the background, okay. Matteo Leparini is uh, checking for any foul play in terms of the contacts that have yes, been made. Yep. Holly Aitchison says that she wants the forwards to start this bit of work for her. Connie Powell. How is it tackle? There for Allcroft. England straight into the drive. Just holds momentarily. Can they work it those final few inches to get over the line? They are over, they are down, the try awarded. <laughs> Referee happy enough she saw it. Is it Maisie Allen? She's certainly the one getting the congratulations, my goodness me. So they knew exactly what they wanted to do when they had the penalty they went straight in um, for the corner and then going across and over the line and it does appear like it's Allen everyone's treating it as if it was I can tell you the cheer hasn't gone up here because the announcer has just said an England try because like us it's a little answers on a postcard it is Maisie Allen who comes up through the middle of that mall my goodness me first cap first try absolute dream bringing England up to the 50-point mark at home as well. She might want to buy a lottery ticket later. <laughs> yeah. England's eighth try. And it goes to the hometown girl. Big lift of Gallagher on the restart. That try pushing England to just over double the points that Canada have managed to accrue. Beckett. Okay, hold left. There uh, with Hunt. Using it now. Goes into the air. Invites Tessier onto it. She's got half a ton of cotton wool shoved up her nose after that little bump on the conk earlier. Kill done. Sends it downfield. It'll sit up for Madison Grant. Dow back pedals. Has Aitchison with her. And she's called the mark. Ball goes into touch, does it? Yes, it does. Cap, this will be the time for you to tell us who's impressed you this afternoon. Uh, some impressive performances, you know, I think that Holly Aitchison has been uh, brilliant today, but the player for me, I think it's her best game she's ever had in an England shirt, and it's Ellie Kildun, I think she's been fantastic. For the Bollinger player of the match today, uh, she's been outstanding. Try scored, offloading, defence across the kicking game, I just think her best game, definitely. Absolutely given England a lot of go forward, hasn't she? Jones, oh look at the hands through. Allen, did Roland just lose control? She might have done. Certainly was hit defence at the same time. Clara, I'll get you to watch this time. Not done too badly in just her fifth time playing at 13. Eleanor Roland, 
Mum is in town watching this game, incidentally. I understand that uh, Dad is in France. He had Rugby World Cup tickets. This fixture wasn't announced early enough, so he's decided to stick with his first choice. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know might, about that. I wondered if he would draw that reaction. Yeah, that's a, that's a firm no <laughs> from me. <laughs> England, Chile coming up later at the Rugby World Cup, of course. The goody to Apps. Oh, and it's loose to Apps and Hunt putting all that pressure on defensively. Now a chance for Taylor Perry. Maisie Allen going digging for it. De Goody. Away from Apps. Bukaboom. Back in field. Royer. Thrown to the ground by Hunt. Apps. Put that into the air. Harvey is challenging for it, but it's back from Dow for Kildun. And Kildun slips the clutches again. Oh, and she gets round another one. If anyone's making notes of defenders beaten, Kildun must be leading the way. Canada have turned the ball over there, though. Last few seconds on the clock. Apps for Tessier. Harvey. Adding to those caps. A 31st cap for Magali Harvey now. Alex Ellis couldn't get hold of it. The goody. Grant. It's another little moment of miscontrol and... Jones looks for McDonald and then puts it forwards and now England will give chase. Oh, it's gone over the head of Claudia McDonald. Back in field from Farris. Pelletier, so strong and sinewy. The Canadian nine. England look to counter ruck through. It'll be a ca Canadian penalty. You're faking the ability to clean out. Not rolling. Sorry, what was that, 21? Tessier sends it upfield. Last play. This time. Bogue. Can Canada make anything happen? Apps is there as a first receiver at the front of the line out. They will go to the tail, but Gallagher will do the spoil job. This time. Yes. Hunt to send this into the stands, and England have the job done. Canada coming to visit in this first of two tests. Have certainly met an England and Red Roses side who are very keen to show what they can do in the post-Middleton era. Eight tries all in all from this team. A brace for Helena Rowland as well. And first capper Maisie Allen getting herself onto the score sheet. Canada continuing to play, though, some excellent stuff from them. And they will be even better next week as a result of this week's hit out. It finishes at Sandy Park. England 50, Canada 24. Well, well, well. So much to enjoy over this encounter. Ellie Kildan and Rosie Galligan. Galligan would really have been pushing for that player of the match, not as well. She was superb out there, working hard. And we did just start to see some of that new shape. Any of you out there who are into your analysis? Well, sometimes we see players in little pods round the corner, see them in twos and threes. Just started to see England posting some of those forwards in single positions, out on those wider positions, trying to stretch defences. Saw Allcroft there, Gallagher as well. Just a little glimpse of the future of where England might be moving under John Mitchell over the next couple of years towards that home Rugby World Cup. They are the number one side in the world. They came so close in New Zealand. Marley Packer. Having the word with the team as the coaches now join in. And 
And there is Lewis Deacon. Squeezing them close. His first victory on the board as interim head coach. And of course, for the likes of Lou Meadows and for one Sarah Hunter. Now wearing a coach's bib. Had Brian Ashton as well, who's been overseeing things, sharing his knowledge with the coaches, been enjoying his experience in the women's game. And what about Maisie Allen? Gets that debut, gets her first England try. What a wonderful moment it will be for her. Turned 22 during the week. Lovely scenes on the England rugby social media channels of her receiving her jersey from Marley Packer. Really emotional time alongside Sarah Hunter. And well, from one rather experienced back rower to another, what words will be said in that conversation, I wonder? Seven days time then, of course, we will be making our way to North London. These two sides will face each other again then. We talked about Canada not being the professional outfit compared to England, who are full-time professionals, of course, and nine days they've had together, the Canadians. Well, they'll have another seven before they then play all together. Right, well, she certainly impressed over the course of the match, managing to get a score herself and setting up countless knows how many others for everybody else. Down pitch side speaking to Kenzie Benali is our Bollinger player of the match, Ellie Kildun. Yes, congratulations, Ellie. You are our Bollinger player of the match. What a game for you. What a day in the office. Some great footwork for that first try and another in the second half as well. You must have enjoyed that today. Yeah, I mean, it was a tiring match. Credit to Canada because they're fit. Um, but we've had seven weeks of hard work and graft and we were, we were ready for this match. We still think that there's gears to come and we're just excited for the next match to come as well to keep on going. Absolutely. Canada asked more questions of the Red Roses in that second half, but you were just too strong for them today. Yeah, they came out firing. We knew what we needed to do and it was, you know, at times it was a bit erratic, but it just shows that there's a new England side coming out there that we can do structure and we can go off the cup as well. And it, the, the score shows just that. And I know your family uh, are behind us in the crowd today. How special is it to have them here supporting you? Yeah, it's massive. They've come down all the way from Yorkshire, so it's been an early set, set off this morning. So I always look for them in the anthem. My mum's got a big orange coat on, so it was good to see them sing the anthem to them because it feels like been, it's been a long time since we've played. Oh, that's so lovely. And nearly 10,000 fans here at Sandy Park. They were certainly noisy. They seemed to enjoy it almost as much as you did. Yeah, it's been amazing. I mean, to sing the anthem and be able to hear the, the crowd sing it as well is always going to be special. But to know that everybody was behind us today just makes it that extra little bit special as well. Well, Ellie, congratulations. You are our Bollinger player of the match. So I'll hand that over to you and we'll let you go and enjoy the celebrations. Thank you. Lewis, hi, thanks for speaking with us. Fantastic performance from your side today. We've just been speaking to Ellie, our player of the match. She was sensational, but lots of other contributors from the whole squad today. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's a great start. Um, it's a bit frantic and a bit messy at times, but it was always going to be first, first hit out of the season. Um, the girls have worked incredibly hard in the off season and we're still working them hard in training now. So they've gone into the game a little bit, little bit fatigued, but yeah, it's really positive. Like we can get so much better. The, the, the match sharpness when that comes and the more of um, our game understanding starts to grow, then we can only get better, which is exciting. We spoke before the game about this new era, this new approach and style of play. Did the team execute that in the way you'd hoped today? Yeah, they showed signs of it, which is like, you know, the, the kicking game I thought was outstanding. Um, there's a lot of areas to, to work on. We, we got lost a few times, which is to be expected because it's all new to them. But yeah, it gives us things to work on. Obviously, you'll take on Canada again in a week's time. What are the things you'll be working on between now and then? Sorry, say that again. What are the things you'll be working on between now and then before the next match against Canada? I, I thought, obviously, we, we dropped off far too many tackles for my liking. Um, the girls know that as well. But I think that, 
that will only come with match sharpness and match fitness and we'll, we'll get better like you keep saying. Well, Lewis, a, a great way to start, great win, congratulations, thank you. Kevin, thanks for joining us, commiserations. Your team showed great signs from their performance today though. Yeah, we lack of consistency to play just go to be for 80 minutes and we start very poorly, we give so much easy try for England, so we know that and uh, the beauty of that is we're going to play them twice again, so it's going to be good for us. Well, you mentioned that second match, which will take place next week. What will you be doing in training between now and then to, to work on whatever you weren't too happy with today? When you get 50 points, you know you have to work on your defensive. And I think also we have to finish our action. We get a lot of like possibility to score more trying than we did then. So we have to refine that. And again, it's just one week, so you won't change a lot of stuff, but you have to work on details for sure. And Kevin, how beneficial is it to be playing England in this two test series before heading out for the WXB tournament? Uh, we have a lot of new players coming in, so they have to do those mistakes now. They did a couple of mistakes as new players sometimes, so it's good to do them now. And even it's for World Cup 2025, so sometimes it's good for them to learn and learn against the best team. That's, uh, that's the best way to learn. Kevin, thanks for speaking with us. Take care. Oh, thanks to Kenzie. Good to hear from Kevin, Kevin Rue as well. Spent 15, 16 years in Canada, originally from Paris, Bordeaux. Extended his contract in April through to 2025, having been first appointed in March last year. Led Canada to that fourth place at Rugby World Cup. Seems to have a good relationship as well with the new CEO at Canada Rugby, Nathan Bombrees, who he says is a game changer. They're having to approach it, of course, with a little bit more awareness of where they want their players from sevens and fifteens to keep popping up because they do have that Paris 2024 opportunity on the horizon that they qualified for earlier this year. Olympic sevens next year, something else to look forward to. OK, a reminder of your opportunity to get yourself along to Twickenham and enjoy four hospitality tickets for the Red Roses against Ireland. It'll be on the 20th of April when we all go back there after that. 60,000 were there for the Grand Slam decider. Get your phone out, get that QR code onto the screen. You can enter now. You can also head to the description on our YouTube and Facebook pages. Get your place to enjoy some TikTok Women's Six Nations action. The Red Roses against Ireland. Three course meal, inclusive bar. You know the score. Eight tries for England, 50 on the board. It seems a job well done. Let's head down to our studio to join Kenzie. Nick, thanks ever so much. I'm delighted to say Kat Merchant is alongside us once again, as is the woman of the day, uh, Lark Atkin Davis. What a special moment today is for you, your 50th senior cap. How are you feeling? Just such an honour to run out for my 50th cap today. Um, to be like alongside these girls and to put in that performance. Um, yeah, really, really special day. Yeah, win was the cherry on uh, the cake, I'm sure. But I know your family and I believe your husband, I can now say, is yeah. here with us <laughs> at Sandy Park. I'm sure they've watched on with extreme pride. Yeah, absolutely. Like It's always amazing to have them here supporting. They follow me, not just around the country, but around the world. And like moments like this, it's great to reflect and you know, think about those moments that you've had on the pitch and off the pitch with them. They make massive sacrifices for me. I make the choices. So, yeah, it's great to have them here with me. I imagine it's been a bit of a whirlwind couple of months as well with getting married just last month. Are you still yeah. in that newlywed bubble? <laughs> yeah, definitely. But uh, it was straight back to rugby, really. Um, had a couple of days off and then back to Bristol and then back to England camp. So um, it was kind of like, we're married now, bye, I'm off to camp. Um, so, yeah, like I said, just trying to treasure every moment that we have together at the moment. So a six-week camp as your honeymoon is sort of <laughs> yeah, uh, much. what you wanted? Yeah, Alan, yeah. <laughs> Alan, our kit man, joked with me the first week back. He was like, how's your honeymoon going? Are you enjoying it? Um, because I was, yeah, back in camp. So, um, yeah, but it's, yeah, like I said, like such a special day today and been amazing to have the support from everyone. I suppose the, the benefit is of having the husband here is he's also in the rugby world, right? So he gets it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, he's such a big supporter of me. Um, plays love rugby, loves rugby. So, yeah, um, he, he loves, loves being here and loves supporting and coming along the journey with me. 
And now, how was it running out um, for that first gap, being on your own for a second? Because before the game, I said you might be a bit shy about that part. How was it? Yeah, to be honest, um, I'm not one to like sort of a, a, a big like occasion. <laughs> I probably shy away from it a little bit, um, certainly just for the wedding and certainly probably did today a bit. But um, incredibly special to run out. Um, and yeah, I was very nervous. Um, but like I said, to put in the performance that we did today was was really special. Well, I'm going to embarrass you even further now because Kat was saying before the game when we were speaking about what an accomplishment this is for you, about what an amazing person you are. <laughs> so it's a testament to you not only as a rugby player, but as a personality as well. You're the whole package. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, now I, now I feel really embarrassed. Now I feel like I'm <laughs> blushing. But um, yeah, no, um, I just try and be the best, best version of myself every time that I get on the pitch or you know, around the girls and whatever I can do to support everyone. Um, yeah, I'll just I'll just do it because it's so special to be part of this group. And I know it was a special night last night with the shirt presentations. I imagine that was quite an emotional evening before coming into today. Yeah, absolutely. I'd probably say I'm not massively emotional, but it did choke me up a little bit in terms of, um, yeah, I was asked to say a few words and having Maisie Allen as well, getting her first cap, I think is always a massive, massive achievement and really special moment too. So yeah, every time that we have shirts, it's, it's special to be in that room. So yeah, it's it's been emotional, but it's been amazing at the same time. Well, I think we will be speaking to Maisie Allen in just a moment. Before we do though, could you share any words that perhaps some of your teammates said to you this morning? Anything they might have wish you well with ahead of this special day? Yeah, just I think a lot of go go do what you consistently do, go be yourself, um, and we're all super proud of you. So yeah, really special. So oh. cute, so <laughs> lovely. Oh, that's what we like to hear, isn't it? It's yeah, beautiful. Definitely. Did you have that kind of relationship with your teammates when you're uh, part of the Red yeah. Roses? So um, my 50th was in, over in New Zealand and uh, the players had got me cards and stuff, put them on my wall. It's such a lovely occasion. I. Um, I'm very, I, I didn't like the run out myself because I'm very, very <laughs> awkward. All I did was stress about, am I going to run to the wrong line? Am I going to be stood there forever? Like, but uh, no, but it does stick with you forever. And you just remember your squad together as teammates. And it's such a close thing. And not a lot of people get to put the white shirt on, even less get to get 50 caps. So it's such a, an achievement. And, uh, and how far the game has come to have the, the crowds here today were fantastic and yeah, brilliant stuff. Yeah, you're both part of a very elite club and I feel somewhat inferior <laughs> stood alongside you. Uh, but a huge congratulations to you, Lark. It really is much. some achievement. Um, and I believe we have Meg standing by somewhere. Is that right? She'll be coming in in just a moment, I'm told. So we'll continue chatting <laughs> until she's here. Do you know why she can't join us right now? Is because behind this camera, we have a sea of fans who are desperate to grab selfies and yeah. autographs. We've mentioned throughout the day, haven't we, just how spectacular this crowd is at Sandy Park. Can you hear them when you're out there? And how much does that spur you on? Yeah, I think um, quite often you can hear them. I probably block it out a little bit, um, especially obviously thrown in at the line out. But the noise when you sort of make big tackles or when you score, like is absolutely unbelievable. And I think, you know, seeing everyone here, like the Canadian players, the English players, signing things, going around, I think it's such an important part of our game. Um, it shows where we're going. Um, our fan base are incredible. Like they travel around the country to support us and we couldn't ask for anything more. There's one particular fan over here that's uh, telling everybody it's his birthday and it's uh, working very well. So uh, good tactics, I think, to have. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. The fans have been absolutely phenomenal and the rugby has been phenomenal as well. So you've certainly given them something to cheer about. This is a great way to start this two test series. We're looking forward to next week. But Lark, we'll let you go and enjoy the celebrations and get involved with those selfies Thank you very much. and everything else. As Meg Jones comes in, <laughs> she's yes. eager and ready to go. How are you now? <laughs> Come on, you've had your moment. Yeah. Over to you, Meg. How are we doing? You okay? Very well, thank you. Great to see you. Listen, th that must have felt fantastic for you. Obviously, you know, back into the 15s after a, a significant period out. You've been amongst the sevens, of course, but how did it feel to be back out there? Yeah, wow, tough. I'm, I'm just happy to only have 14 minutes. I think that was the, that was the plan. So um, I can definitely last for that long. Um, I'm not sure about a lot longer, but yeah, no, amazing work. We went out there, we spoke about having, having courage in our play. And I guess we really showed that. I think there's a different variety to how we're attacking now. And hopefully spectators can see that as well. Yeah, I for one was super excited to see you come off the bench, can carve up, and you did just that. It was absolutely amazing. Favourite moment from kind of the day today? From the whole day or just match? Whole day. Oh. Whole day. It doesn't have to be rugby, it can be anything. No, yeah, I think 
Oh, I don't know, lucky getting her 50th. Yeah. I want to speak about last night because um, when we had shirt press, she spoke and she just said like, from like time to reflect on those caps that you have. And I definitely, I definitely had time when I was in sevens to reflect on my 15s career as well, because it all kind of comes at once. So um, yeah, that really stuck with me when Lark said, you know, don't, don't take for granted each, each time you step on that pitch. Um, and yeah, I guess every moment's very special. What's it like having people like Lark in the side to, to lead the way and, and to look up to? Yeah, amazing. You know, she's such a different style of leader. She's very empathetic. She's caring, she's a good listener. Um, something that I really lean on as well as, as a natural leader. But that whole group just shines with leaders. You know, everyone's got a voice, everyone's got an opinion. And it's, it's how we can utilize that in the right times. So yeah, like you see, you know, Packers, pure passion. She's our captain, you know, we really want to lead. She's leading from the front there. And then you've got the likes of Burnsy, really tactical technician around the scrum, the forwards here. She's even telling us backs how to play out the back as well. So it's fantastic. And um, yeah, we definitely need to lean on each other for that. And we have been over the past seven weeks. Yeah, it certainly is a phenomenal squad, isn't it? And you're obviously a really big personality yourself, very bubbly. So how was it for you coming back into that dressing room? Did you slot right back in or were you a bit nervous? I was very, it's very nervous, yeah. I think like, it's like going to a new school. I think you kind of get that feeling, first day of school vibes. So yeah, it was very daunting. I know most of the girls, but they were like, look, just be yourself. Um, and I, I, I tried to take that in my stride. So yeah, each week, week I'm getting a bit more confidence speaking out, um, but also learning about the game as well more. So um, especially how we're playing now. And then we've obviously had 50th caps. We've got you coming back in, and then Maisie Allen. What would you kind of? What would your advice be to her? Like first cap, like she's achieved it now. What would you say from your experience? Oh, she's she's old before her time, that girl, isn't she? <laughs> she was in the seventh with us, and like, she's just a, a, a natural student of the game that just wants to continuously learn. And I think that that in itself is a skill, something you can never coach. So being coachable is one of the things, and she definitely has that. She's always asking questions. Um, the advice I'd give her: look, just grab it with both hands and run. Get things wrong. Do it again. If you get it wrong again, do it again and just continuously learn. But she does that very well. So, yeah, she's a superstar. We're looking forward to talking to her in a minute. Uh, do you have family here today, Meg? Yeah, I can see my dad there. Barbar's top. Oh, look he's at him. right there. Welsh oh, man. The camera. <laughs> Absolute Welsh man. Look at him. <laughs> look he loves at him. the camera How's that as well. For number one fan. <laughs> he loves the camera. Love that. <laughs> How is it for you to have them here? I mean, they're obviously immensely proud of you, but, you know, it must give you an extra something knowing they're watching on in the stands. Yeah, I love it. You know, my, my dad supported me in my seventh journey, but. He always said, can you just pop back over so we can come watch you? <laughs> He's like flying to Dubai all the time. I just can't possibly do it. Um, so I think it's hurting his wallet a bit much. Um, so yeah, he's happy just to drive down to Exeter. I think that, that helped him. And I think Celia's over there somewhere. She was shouting me on, but yeah, it's nice to have her in the crowd as well. And Helena Rowland's dad's apparently in France, not here today to watch her. He, he had that World Cup tickets and he stayed over there. So at least yeah. your dad is there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> He's asking Next. for your autograph. Yeah, so yeah. we better let you go and uh, oblige Amazing. And, and take some pictures. Uh, Meg, well done today. Thank you so much Thanks, for well speaking with us. Thanks, guys. Take yeah. care. Oh, they're superstars, aren't they? Yeah. They're so brilliant. And yeah. this is such an incredible scene. I mean, we mentioned a moment ago how many fans are still here buzzing about the stadium. The vibe in here is still absolutely phenomenal. It feels like nobody's even left. Yeah. And that is testament to where the women's game is at. I mean, it feels like there's no better time to be a woman in sport than now. Oh, definitely. And they're so humble as well. Like We spoke about the Red Roses, like the history of the shirt going in. Both the players we've just spoken to made sure us old girls uh, <laughs> were looked after. Lark, bless her. I was having a two hour journey. She made sure she made me a full coffee. Hello, there's the lady. Oh, All right, here she stuff. is. Yeah. Oh, Maisie Allen, uh, sorry to interject no, into no. what you were saying, Thanks, Kat. Uh, what a privilege it is to have you here with us. A very special day for you receiving your first senior cap. How are you? How did you enjoy that? Oh, I'm actually quite tired. We've just had some top ups, so that's the hardest <laughs> bit of pre-season. Um, but no, I'm, I'm buzzing. I can't, can't quite explain how, how excited and how much this means. So yeah, really happy. We keep stressing the, the fans here, the situation behind the camera is quite extraordinary. Was this moment what you thought it would be or has it exceeded expectations? No, it's so much more. The, um, the cheer when I came on was amazing. I, I feel so, so loved and it's so nice, so nice. So first cap, first try, what can we expect from your second cap? <laughs> oh, who knows, <laughs> yeah. who knows, I don't Patrick. know, yeah. Like, yeah. I, can't, I can't quite believe what's just happened. Um, but no, it's, it's been amazing just to get the run out and to, to play with the girls after a long pre-season and you know they're, they're all so amazing I can't can't quite put it into words well I think it's only right that we take a look at that try now we're going to embarrass you even further and oh, um, hopefully you'll be able to see it on the monitor here uh, you can talk us through it perhaps 
We can't see it, it on the monitor yet, but I'm sure you remember it. It yeah. was a, a great was moment a... for you, obviously one you'll remember, but uh, what a way to, to mark your debut in the senior side. Yeah, no, it's really special. That's a, um, that was a driving mall try, so credit to all the forwards there who really have to, well, th hooker who throws it in, the pack who catches it and drives it over, and then I'm just sort of there protecting the ball. So I'm lucky enough to die it down, but you know, that's, a full, that's a full squad effort, that one. And favourite non-rugby moment for, for today on your first cap? Non-rugby moment? Uh, we went to my uh, favourite local coffee shop, the tasting room, and that was really nice this morning for a flat white, so yeah. Do you know what? I always well, find it really interesting talking to players. You see yourselves out here working hard, you see them as the athletes, but I love that, you know, away from that, you just want to go down, have a coffee with your mates. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah, no, absolutely. Got to get the match put right, and that's always a, always so you're a coffee. A, you're a coffee fan? Oh, absolutely, yeah. What's your go-to coffee. coffee order? Flat white, normal oh. milk. Oh, um, lovely stuff. Yeah, yeah, and then normal milk, did you say? Normal milk, yeah. <laughs> right, normal I know there's quite milk. a lot, there's quite a lot of oat milks and yeah, yeah. things like that, but no, normal <laughs> milk and then, yeah, normal. <laughs> and how will you unwind? So coffee pre-match, but obviously I imagine the adrenaline is, is kicking in now. Well, we've um, all got to go and jump in the ice bath for 10 minutes, so that's <laughs> going to be pretty, pretty horrific. Um, and then when I regain feeling in my toes, I think I'll probably have a bite to eat. <laughs> So, yeah. Absolutely, richly deserved. Um, just a, a word once again before we say farewell on the fans. They're phenomenal, aren't they? And I'm sure they'll be in fine voice again at the Stonex Stadium. Oh uh, yeah, for for fans down in Eric's, to for Sandy Park, and especially Chiefs fans here, they're they're all so amazing. And I can't, you know, the fan base we've built up and the little girls here, who are watching us play and getting signatures now, it's just amazing. And I hope, I hope that we can inspire and and make the next generation want to play. So yeah, yeah. No, amazing. Dream debut for you at your home ground here. All the very best. Thank you, very uh, thank you so much for speaking with us. Go and enjoy this special moment. Maisie, thank you thank so you much. much. Uh, so there you go. Fantastic to speak to three of our Red Roses there as part of our O2 Inside Line Live. What a special day this has been, Kat. Uh, your personal highlight? Uh, the, the, them playing with freedom, I think Maisie Allen getting her first cap actually and Lark getting her 50th, really cool moments. Like I've known Lark for a long time when she was back uh, at Worcester and so incredible to see that. But also players that you've seen throughout the Prem stepping up onto the, you know, the bigger stage at England and it's a really nice moment too. Well, Kat, it's been an absolute privilege to be alongside you today. Thank you so much thank you. for your company and thank you for your company as well to those of you who have tuned in on both the England Rugby YouTube and Facebook and, of course, TSN in North America. We do this all again next week, of course, when the Red Roses take on Canada at the Stonex Stadium. We look forward to seeing you then. Bye for now. Decides to go down that far.